Talk about it all here on the Jordy Collada Show. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. You know, one thing about Jaden that I've tried to talk to him about is tightening his chin strap. Because he doesn't tighten it. So every time he gets hit, it looks like his helmet's all messed up. And it's like, oh, God, he just got rocked. For the win! After a fucking Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, <laughs> boys. Are you kidding me? Well, uh, LSU fan came stuck his spike in my boot. <laughs> that ball my heart. Oh, 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 oh. Fan brought his two grandkids by and literally was just 30 seconds. Just wanted to say thank you for the team and the season and what you did. And, and how much it means to everybody here is, is truly what makes LSU special. Yeah. Kelly, we're official. Finally, I'm <laughs> get a chance to meet you. I thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Money through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collada Show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy, fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we get in the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collada Show. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Nice start. Big day. Nice start. It's the Jordan Collada Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the time. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here from our Click Here Digital Studios on this Wednesday morning. Appreciate you starting your day here with us. Make sure to give us a like, share, comment, subscribe before we get out of here as we'll talk to Wilson Alexander and Jacques on our Southern Regional Medical Center phone line. Remember Southern Regional Medical Center, Real Doctors, Real Solutions. Charlie Harvey, Jason Ramazan, the entire crew over there. And uh, speaking of Jason Ramazan, Mr. Fun's Travel, he's putting the travel and the trip together to Las Vegas. If you want to jump aboard, you can get your uh, airfare, tickets to the game, travel to and from the game, and hotel accommodations just by logging online to MrFundsTravel.com. RMB Builders builds us every single day. Remember RMB Dash Builders online and on Instagram at RMB Builders is where you can find Rhett Bourgeois and the crew. And we are uh, here every day at Click Here Digital. Uh, Lloyd is here, live on this uh, on this Wednesday morning. Stewie live on this Wednesday morning. Christian's here. Get a practice report from Stewie as he was out there yesterday on the practice field. LSU baseball last night. Steamrolls yeah. past McNeese as Bear Jones. Three home runs in the leadoff spot last night for the Tigers as they take care of McNeese and will now pack up and head to Knoxville. To take on Tennessee is uh, last night, as Jay Johnson said, best game the Tigers have played all season long. Best game of the year. Prototypical leadoff hitter, huh? Bear Jones looks the part. Hang him a fastball. See what happens. Oh, started the game off with a bang. I mean, then that's what part of what Jay said was. I mean, 
It's kind of an intimidating leadoff hitter when you really think about it. There's no first pitch, get me over fastball, let's start the game. It is Bear Jones in there that looks like an absolute unit. And he's able to get the game started off the right way. Tigers get a win. Big win for LSU. Um, last night, saw some defensive adjustments. Saw a lot of new faces. Uh, you heard Jay Johnson after the game. He was speaking with the media. We'll have some of that sound for you. We also have Harold Perkins, who was speaking with the media uh, yesterday. Uh, school is out everywhere. Um, Shocker. Yeah. I mean, it really, it, it really kind of is. I mean, they, they've been riding this wave here where they've been putting the kids in danger. They've actually been letting them go to school while yep. it's been raining the past couple of months. They almost they almost canceled school. Like, my kids' school almost canceled school for the solar eclipse. Wow. What? That's actually yeah, like a they, teaching moment. They were scared that it was going to harm the kids and no. they would look at the sun and no. mess their eyes up. Mm. Wait. Wow. Yeah. That's about as 2024 as it can get. I mean. <laughs> so you can't. You're not supposed to directly look at it. Well, I mean, that's why they were giving you, like, the, the $1.50 paper yeah, glasses. Yeah, you get the, you get the old... I mean, you're um, like, so wait, these things are going to protect me against... going to save me? <laughs> the glasses that they give you at the eye doctor after you get your eyes diluted. Those are the best. Did you, see the, did you see the kid that looked in the telescope the wrong way and took the solar eclipse right to the eyeball? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're probably were nervous about is somebody right. doing something like that like, like i blinded your kid well i mean <laughs> there's a there's a stat out there odell beckham he looked at the last solar eclipse with his bare eyes and his stats before were like <laughs> 1200 yards a season that. 13 touchdowns a season and then the next after the solar eclipse look he was like 400 yards a season with three touchdowns so look, there's science behind this. Yes, that's you the put science. Shades on. The the video of Odell staring directly at the sun. He's putting himself through so much pain. He's just <laughs> like, ah, I'm taking it. But I guess I mean I would imagine if there's an eclipse, and you were in like I don't know elementary school, that would be like your science teacher's day. You know, be yeah. like this is what I live for. I'm such a nerd. Absolutely. Like kids, you don't right. know how big of a deal this I mean, is. This is this is this only happens yeah. once I mean, every <laughs> next time you see this you'll have kids <laughs> exactly the next one's not until like 2045 or something the next one in louisiana is like 2078 oh, i'll be dead wow yeah so i missed it <laughs> damn it didn't know it was that yeah, important I, I mean me either and plus it was i mean it was, it was like today yeah, you couldn't see it, anything it, I mean, it just it was got gray dark, dark. Yeah. i mean it was nearly raining outside i mean does it count if you look at it like on Twitter, I is got that no basically idea. the same thing. I mean, I, mean, I felt I like watched, I did see it through some of the social media right. pictures. I watched a video of like Dallas, and right. it was like they actually. Yeah, it turned, seems like the hill country of Texas was like the spot. To yeah, be. it turned like actually nighttime there. Oh, then, my dad was tempted to drive there to go see it. I mean, he oh, is I mean, a big science guy. I had no idea. Bill, I mean, did you guy. see some of the the airport pictures? On the day, like the 4 a.m. travel oh. at MSY down in New Orleans, it looked like Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, like it was mayhem <laughs> inside of the airport on like this random Monday. People were like, well, like what is going on? I got to get back before the eclipse. Or do you want to be in the no, plane? They were, like, they were like trying to be in, the, in Dallas, probably. In Dallas. Yeah. Video. Or, or in the pla on the plane. I mean, there was all types of like, I had no idea. See, I if, had no idea. if you're going to cancel no school, I don't think you should be flying during the eclipse, right? It seems like that would be a bad idea. I mean, it goes totally dark. I mean, I mean with your flight experience, one way to see it. Yeah, flight experience, car experience yesterday. <laughs> oh, yes, very embarrassing. <laughs> Tell moment. the people. Top, top. Like I would say, one top three embarrassing moment. I mean, of my life. Yesterday, ran out of gas in 2024. As a full functioning parent adult <laughs> adult <laughs> with a kid paying Gr a mortgage grown man Just with people in the car oh, that's the worst. <laughs> leaving a client meeting and you're still and the people that i have in the car are like sub 28 oh. so as i'm walking back with the gas can to the ca like it looks like the paparazzi is inside the car because they're putting <laughs> everything on social media <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're on Snapchat. Yeah, you're I mean, like I'm fuck. everywhere in three minutes. You ran out of gas. I mean, I'm with these like you know generation Xers that have to document everything. That have to document everything. I mean, by the time I get the gas in the car, people are texting me. <laughs> you're on the interstate. Should have gotten an EV. I'm like. <laughs> Oh, man, that didn't take long for you to start running y'all's mouth back to the people in the office, huh? Yeah, see, I 
can't trust anybody here. <laughs> it was, I mean, one of the most brutal. It could have been a lot worse. I was about 300 feet from a gas station, but I was one of these like 2024 cars that, first off, the 2024 gas cans need to come with an instruction manual. <laughs> Coach. Second off. Struggle bus. The 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 poke to get to the the tunnel of the gas to get there. You gotta put a little pressure like, on that. Like I never realized the the true purpose Struggle. of the nozzle. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I mean like the reason why I'm being able to like jam this thing in is because I mean you got this steel rod. What are they so this scared is? of? I have no idea. <laughs> but, I mean, I've out. got like gas. I mean, I'm on airline highway at the light of Industrial Plex and airline at noon, lunch. I mean, it is buzzing outside. I mean, cars are just like <laughs> zipping by me going, hey, people honking their horn. And I am like <laughs> brawling with <laughs> this gas can. In this, in this like, gas, you know, the gas tank. I mean, like, I, I had no idea you had to like twist the nozzle of the the can to get to it. get the gas moving. So as I'm like, got it, like, you know, like up in the air, like ready to like pour, like nothing is moving. It's you know not getting I mean? any lighter. Like, nothing. No, no, nothing's, nothing's coming moving. out. Only like kind of like leaking from the cap onto yeah. my hand. At this point, like it's a disaster. Now I just smell like gas. I mean, it's a disaster. <laughs> It's a disaster. Wind blowing. It's going all over my club. And it's like, at this point, I, I've got a two gallon can and I'm spilling a gallon of it. <laughs> right. I have to go back. Yeah, I have to go back. <laughs> I have to go back and then, like, explain, like, well, I, I can't get the gas into the tank. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, mean, like, I can't get the gas. I got all, I got all of the, I got all the ingredients. Yeah, I just don't know how to make a cake. I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. it. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? So. Finally, I just go like retro on this. I just like like fig- like you know get aggressive. Yeah, I mean, you know yeah I'm I mean? just gonna shove this into this. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just figuring this out. Like, Think I mean, this it. has to happen. <laughs> and I mean, like by the grace of God, this gas starts flowing out of the can, and I mean, we get barely to the tank. I mean, it was hairy, boys, for a minute there. <laughs> Trust Wait, me. You know what I mean? <laughs> because there's, first of all, embarrassing already to run oh. the gas. Second of all, if you would have had to ask for help after oh going, like, oh, oh, dude, it's over. It's useless. It's over. I mean, at this Man, point, can't I'm, do anything I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking for a new job <laughs> yeah, at this it. point. He doesn't know how to put <laughs> I mean, gas in the car boss. before. <laughs> doesn't know to get gas. Doesn't know how to put gas in the car. Uh, um, <laughs> it, it was... It was a brutal moment, but it all worked out. But I will say, by the time I got back to the office after lunch, I mean, spit. Oh, dude, I had a gas can on my desk. I mean, the whole, the whole. <laughs> You're the gas man. <laughs> I don't want to hit a gas. Yeah, right. I mean, yes, yes, it was me. I ran out of gas. How the hell they know I got gas? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> probably the two worst people in the company could have been in the car for that moment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I mean, it just didn't help. I mean, by the, I mean, three minutes. I mean, you ran out of gas. You're out of gas? What's happening? What's the deal? Are we running out of gas? Are you an airline? Jordy just ran out of gas. <laughs> yeah, right. We're totally oh, I mean, like, gas. Jordy Colada, yeah. airline highway, <laughs> totally ran out of gas. Like an I'm Amber like, Alert. Just, just following Have you with the camera. Have you seen this man? <laughs> I'm really kind of an introverted extrovert. I don't really like attention. You know, they're like, no shit. I'm like, <laughs> no, really, no, really. Turn it off. Get Seriously. it out of here. Stop, stop, please. Stop. Uh, social anxiety is very high right now. <laughs> right. Well, it's not that big of a deal. No, no, no. Why are you filming it? It is, it is. It is. <laughs> right. Please. Stop. Why does this stop. have to be on camera? Stop. Oh, my God. Ed, did, did, did it ever get to a tipping point? Was the temper flaring? Did I don't know. No, yeah, because, just, I mean, I was... I was uh, the frustration. Yeah, right. I mean, I was, I was in the... I was in a wash. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was I'm in a war. wash. I mean, at that point, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you flip the switch, I mean, you'll you'll end up, you'll go viral. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't get it into the tank. Yeah, I mean, um, get it off feet. How long? How long was this excursion? I'd say twenty, twenty-five. Could have been. I'm telling you, could have been worse. In the in the in the grand scheme of it, I am going to peel the positive away from a very negative and embarrassing moment. Um. We were 300 feet from the gas station. We were on the shoulder. You had your wallet. They had a, they had a gas can, can at the gas station that I walked up to. 
it all worked out from the payment standpoint. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, because there's a situation yeah. where you can oh, be like, I gotta get in my wallet. Yeah, I gotta get in my wallet. You know, like we're in the left lane at the light. It's over. Yeah, I mean, like, because really, it started to kind of putt at the light. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. No. Oh, my God. Come on, give me one more. Because I, I did say it out loud. You know what I mean? I was like, we have to stop and get some gas. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, this is not my car. I'm not I'm no excuses. I did screw this up, but I, I am will the one say driving. I, I did need- not know the vehicle. Right? It was one of those cars where it stops telling you the mileage of which you're empty after fifty. Oh, so it just Wait, says low? Right. It just so says then low it just fuel. Goes to low fuel. Oh, damn. My car goes all the way to zero. My car, it drops me down to the zero. Yeah, it goes oh, to zero. Nice. They know it goes and then I've got a 22 mile reserve tank that I know I can bank oh, on I if I ever wanted to really like push it, push it like I, I did car. yesterday, <laughs> right? The stranger, yeah. The, the, the and I, I mean, again, no excuse. But what I car. screwed this right. up. I'm an adult. I knew the night before I should have got gas, but my commute is very, it's very short, short it's minimal, very clear. right? So I'm like, and there's a gas station at the right halfway there. point of my commute. Right. Um. And then like yesterday morning, they're like, "Hey, we need you in on this client meeting. Are you in?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll go for sure." Can you drive? I'm like, yeah. "Oh, yeah." There's. <laughs> There's this yeah, much gas. In yeah, my car. I can I can drive. <laughs> and like even on the drive, like confirm you know, like confirming, I'm like, ah, I need gas. But I need you don't gas. Stop. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I we mean? We got time. I could do I'm in a meeting, time. we're in a meeting, we yeah. need to leave about ten minutes. It takes about ten minutes to get there. We'll leave fifteen minutes before, we'll all be on time. Then they get thrown into a situation where they're on a call. They you know, it's like, hey, we gotta roll, so we roll, you know, we get there, all good. Meeting goes fantastic. Everybody's role was played. Client ends up spending more money. In fact, buys like an add-on that we end up selling. So we're all kind of like, yeah, yeah, great meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunch, you know, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Where should we go? Yeah, like, me, what's boys. going on, right? And I'm like, well, I do need to get yeah. gas. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Dude, I got to stop and get back. Like, in fact, I'm like, I don't mind if I stop and get gas, right? And like the girl in the front seat's like, no, just run out of gas. <laughs> yeah. I will. I'm like... Oh, all right. I would put that out to the universe. <laughs> well, I'm about to. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we get to the stoplight, like right past Women's Hospital. You with me? You know where I'm at now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, on yeah. Airline Highway, cuz. Yeah. Lunch. Yeah. Oh, it's buzzing. I mean, like, whew, whew, <laughs> 18 wheelers to like Everything. Mercedes, six series. <laughs> I mean, just flying by me. And I mean, we're at the stoplight. I'm like, this is it. I think I, I, I think we're running out because because the 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 dash lights came on. Oh, oh damn! Like the car had turned off. Right. Like, yeah. And now you're trying to. It's time to start back and up I'm again. Like, I think the car just turned off. Mm. And they're like, <laughs> "No way!" And I'm like, "I think we're shut up." Oh no! You know what I mean? Like, for as much as I want to be like, "All of y'all, shut up!" Yes. Everybody, sit down and shut <laughs> yeah, up. Right. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> and then I'm like. It's over. I'm like, oh my God, we're out of gas, bro. We're out of gas. It's over. We're out of gas. And then it cranks back up for like 20 seconds. I put it in drive and just go. Yeah. Done it. That's all you can't do. Done it. And we just roll, bro. Roll. We're rolling. And I'm like, get to the gas station, get to the gas station. I think I make the gas station, if not for. I start thinking that while it's rolling, I'm gonna put it in neutral. Oh God. You man the seat. Like I'm I'm coaching at this yeah. point. Like we're screwed. Is. The plane's going down. <laughs> like we're crashing. Everybody right? grab a parachute. So, like, here's what's gonna happen. I'm jumping in the back. I'm pushing while it's in neutral. You drive. You steer. Right? That everybody's like at this point, like, all right, I'm in. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm in, I'm in. in. I, got I, got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> I didn't take into account the 2024 models, bro. I opened the door and the car completely yes. shuts off. Cannot drive with like the door. Like the emergency, though. it felt as if the it, emergency, emergency brake breaks, pulls. Yeah. And I mean, like, my shoulder goes into the steering I honk the horn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, uh, I'm getting out the car. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in the And I'm like, we're screwed. All right, fuck it. <laughs> I had a plan. We're screwed. I had a plan. So I, like, look around. I'm like, we're screwed. Yeah. 
This I mean, is over. We're 300 feet away from the <laughs> the gas. 300 three, yards. We're three, probably about two football fields away ooh. from the gas station. We just get out and walk. We're on the shoulder. Oh. Can't find the hazards. Nothing. Oh, Not my damn. car. You know what I mean? Not my, Not my car. car. Not my car. Not my car. Usually in the middle, though. <laughs> Not my car. On the new cars. You don't even um, need that. It's a, it's and then the, the whole gas can, gas tank thing. Goes down. Now, it was an ordeal, boys. The, the new gas can, I'm telling you, it was an ordeal. It is. It it'll ordeal. trick anybody. Like I was, I ran out of gas. Like I was telling y'all before, and I got a new gas can, and I was like, "What do I do with this?" It's not the old school no, way. It ain't it's those. Like, this, like take the top off and pour the gas. This nah, goes into gotta, that hole, right? But it Six goes into that hole, and you have to press that button. Yeah, like exactly how they say to press it, or it won't work. And you'll just have gas on you like Jordy did. <laughs> it was. And then you realize how important gas is. It was a hell of a like, reality car. television moment. You know, if that was yeah. on TV, that would have been, like, been a viral episode. moment. Oh, yeah. yeah you know Seinfeld I mean? episode. You would have felt like you were on punk. 100%. Like, where's the camera? 100%. <laughs> there like, right I here? was. I was. Like, I want to fight the camera. Yeah, man. I mean, I was all over the camera. I mean, I'm all over the 28, the, the 20 <laughs> to 29, 20, 30 year old demographic. Demo. All over just, the Instagram. All over there is who is this boomer? Yeah, Paul <laughs> can't pump gas. gas. Good lord, what a nerd! Who do y'all work with? Who is this guy? Who hired their grandpa? Puttering yeah, <laughs> right? around, jogging to the gas station. Oh, it was brutal. Bro. That's brutal. It was brutal. It was gas brutal. is in it now. You just fill it all the way up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I guess since it's not your car, you're trying to use as much gas as you can without having to give it back with gas in it. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, it was really kind of like like, the trip back from Pensacola. I'd had like a quarter of a tank. And again, the the commute to and from work is very... It's a hop and a skip. Very quick. Yeah. I'll never run skip. out of gas. I'm not putting that. gas until I'm going <laughs> right. longer distance. You know what I mean? Like the low fuel blinker hit me mm. and I'm like, I got at least a half a day on it. Yeah, no doubt. In my car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, That's how I feel. Like, I mean, really. Like, I mean, very I irresponsible, oh, very yeah. immature, very embarrassing to say out loud. But, <laughs> I mean, literally, I got caught with my uh, pants down. Yeah, I mean, like I was... I just looked around. And we're we're all right. This is it. We're out of gas. All right. Because you honestly never think it's going to happen. <laughs> right. You're always just like, oh, I'll make it. I'm surely not going to run out of gas, right? Oh, I am. Damn, I did. Yeah, I get out, of gas. out of gas. <laughs> and now you can't do anything. It's incredible that the car just and how reliant it is on gas. Like obviously that's why you put it in there. But it just blows my mind still that it's like you need. We don't have anything in here. No, yeah, no. I can I can <laughs> confirm. Thing. I can confirm it is vital. Yeah, it's vital. I feel like they always have a little it's vital bit to in the there performance. To start the thing. Nope. Uh, Bone so, dry. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Hughes Mechanical Contractors. Hughes Mechanical is online at HughesMechanical.net. HVAC services for you wherever you are here in the state of Louisiana. They can find you. They're headquartered in Zachary. They got an office in Covington, so they're in the North Shore as well. Two two five six five eight twenty one forty seven online. HughesMechanical.net, uh, HughesMechanical.net, uh, HVAC services for uh, both the uh, residential and commercial markets. They are a trusted Daikin dealer, so get in touch with Hughes Mechanical Contractors today online at HughesMechanical.net. Stewie was out at practice yesterday. We got a practice report from Wilson Alexander as well coming up here at 8 a.m. Always appreciate our time with the award winner, but Stewie, what did you see yesterday? Um, P.J. Woodland is a starting cornerback on this team. Mm. Freshman, early enrollee, P.J. Woodland. Wow. I, I, I could say I'm surprised, but then again, you, you look at him and you see that he is the prototypical Corey Raymond corner. And Corey Raymond lets him have it for sure at practice every day. But he, he responds to it by making plays, by being where he needs to be. Asking questions like you could tell he's bought in and Corey Raymond's bought in on him, so it's it's a great marriage of young player and new coach or new coach but old coach. So if he's a definite starter, who's that? Ashton Stamps with him on Stamp, the other side. Yeah. So Stamps is cornerback one. Yeah, I'd say Stamps is Stamps hasn't has been the only one that hasn't rotated. So what's that mean for Taviano? I I think like. Brian Kelly said you'll probably see two to three guys at cornerback just rotating just because they have depth now. Like, they have guys that they trust enough to put in the game. And I would think Toviano is one of those guys. Like, he started last year, so you know what you get from him. And he's a year ahead of P.J. Woodland. So I wouldn't wouldn't see why they wouldn't let Toviano get his run, too. 
I don't think P.J. Woodland will be like just put him out there and we'll go two corners the whole game. I think it'll be like put him out there, all right, next drive, Toviano. Or two drives, Toviano, two drives. Like it'll be something like that. Play. Yeah, I don't think it would be just stick those two corners out there and they play on the island the whole game. But I mean, we'll see. Like, like do you? Uh, I put that clip of uh, Raymond. Perk. No, Raymond and PJ Woodland in the dock. If you're gonna play that, because that's what's the most impressive thing to me. You didn't see anything like that last year. You didn't see actual. I know they were getting coached, but it wasn't this type of coaching yeah. to where it is paramount that they are stopping mm-hmm. practice to make sure you're doing the things that they want done that they're being done correctly and it was refreshing to see honestly because you didn't really have much of this like there was no nothing really worth filming at practices last year because it was just kind of okay i guess this is going right this seems like it's going fine and now you see this where it's like this is actually them getting coached up and after the year that the defense had last year where it was probably i think it might be easy to say the worst defense in lsu history yeah. Is that? I mean, it's I would think that's yeah, it's in the conversation yeah. to see them actually have to. They're totally flipping the script, and they know that they can't do that again. And now you have a whole new staff of guys that are coming in and coaching up guys that probably weren't taught everything the right way, or at least not the way that Corey Raymond would teach it. And now you're getting to see them be hands on and coached up that way. And that's what that that's what stood out to me. Yeah, I'd even say like this defensive staff is more like cohesive, like more mm-hmm. of a unit. They they work in unison a lot, and they kind of play off of each other like even when they're in individual drills when they come together as a team you could tell the coaches are like communicating with each other to communicate to the players what they need to do and it's not like like Lloyd said like last year it was kind of like this group's off over here right this group's th- over there everybody was in their own individual kind of world and then when they would get together as a team it wasn't like all right like my safeties need to know what my cornerbacks are doing or my linebackers need to know what my defensive line and my safeties are doing or everybody. It, it, it wasn't like that. Now it's like you could tell Blake Baker makes an emphasis on his linebackers knowing what everybody has to do. And he lets his defensive staff know, like, I want your guys to know what everybody has to do because that's how the defense is going to come together and work. So... It's is Tobiano refreshing. working out exclusively at corner? Mm-hmm. He's not working at safety at all? Mm, not really. Uh, what's the safety position look like? Safety room is packed. I, I think that's kind of why like, you kind of saw what you got from him at corner. I think he is a cornerback. I don't think he's a safety. And if he if he were to move, I would probably say he'd probably play in that star position, if anything. Just what Major him, Burns is? Right. But Major Burns' backup is Colin Jackson, so – you know, like that safety room is just so deep. It's like I wouldn't want to w- just move him around again just because the playing time is at cornerback. It's not really at safety. Anything else jump out yesterday? Mm. A lot of people talking about the wide receivers. I kind of – I'm I kind of been – Yeah, guy. I kind of been staying around the defense just because it's, it's so new. It's so many new faces. Just trying to get a feel for who – might be the starters, might be, like, the guys that they trust right now. One guy I really see that they are starting to trust and give first-team reps to is Kimo Machioli, the offensive line, really? defensive line switchover, yes. He has been taking first-team reps. Uh, he's a switchover guy again, so it's like I'm, I'm interested to see what he's going to do because the history of Samoan defensive linemen, like, they, those guys mm-hmm. just work hard. They play hard, like. I see him being one of those, like, just a player that you know what you're going to get from him. What about Savion Jones? Savion is, he's he's a starter. Like, he's been a two-year starter, or this is his third year starting. No, it'd be his second year. Second year starting. So he's a two-year team. starter, so you know, again, you know what you get from Savion. I mean, he seems like he kind of leaned so up. So they kicked him down? No, he's still playing, like, the end position, but they have, like, in this defense, it's like an edge defender, and then you have a defensive end. So, like, one of those guys is, like, a more of a pure edge rusher, and the other guy is, like, more of a pure strong side defensive end. It's like an odd front. Right. But so it's it's an odd front, but it's an even front. Yeah. So they had Jones, Lee, Guillory, Swinson at D-line, Pennon Perkins at linebacker, Woodland, Burns, Ryan, Gilbert, and Stamps all working as DBs. That's the 11 that you saw for most of the day. Yeah. And Sage Ryan and Jordan Gilbert have the two safety positions on lock. What about uh, Sean Washington? Sean shows flashes, but you can tell Bo Davis is still trying to work his magic on the defensive line room. He's always, you could always hear Bo Davis. 
might not always see him, but you can always hear him. He's got the toughest job on the staff. Yeah. I would imagine. And you saw some news yesterday with mm -hmm. uh, Bear Alexander, defensive lineman yeah. from USC, mm -hmm. formerly Georgia, into the portal. I would think that would be a move that LSU doesn't wait to make. Like, I mean, you got to kind of – that's a guy that you would want in your room, former five-star, talented player. I think USC kind of didn't really help him with the people that they put around him, the defense that they ran. Obviously, their defense wasn't very good last year, just like LSU's, but a little bit worse. Um, so he's a guy played in the SEC. I mean, I, I don't understand why LSU wouldn't make that move and try to get as much NIL money, which I'm sure he's going to ask for, as possible to get that guy. Yeah. It seems like that's the reason he went to USC in the first place. Right. Like you saw what he, he showed flashes at Georgia whenever he was able to play. But then like we were all kind of surprised that he left Georgia. Because mm -hmm. after you saw what he did in the national championship game. What, do you have two sacks? Yeah, I, I, he just blew up the defense. Yeah, whenever he was. He, he, we were like, oh, where, Georgia has another one? <laughs> just waiting in the wing. Just waiting. And then he gets that. He transfers to USC, which is an odd fit with Grinch, who gets fired in the middle of the year. And their defense has been bad since... They got since Lincoln Riley got there, and so for him to go there and then not really play well, I think he could probably. I mean, he's probably looking SEC. He's got the caliber of talent so. to do it, and if that's if you're able to score him for LSU's defensive line, that would be massive. Oh, massive. That's what that. It's the school that makes sense, but you're going to have you're not going to be the only team vying for his talents. Yeah. No, it'll definitely be a bidding war. But this is th these are the types of players that we were talking in the portal that LSU's yeah. got to get. I mean, they've got to be able to hit on this these is types an absolute of big players. Gift. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mean, what about Paris Shand? Paris Shand, uh, I mean, I, like it's it's kind of hard to watch the defensive line yeah. just because it's like they don't really get – we don't really get too many looks of them against like the offense. Lodge. Like, like the first year, Brian Kelly's first year, we got like – Qu uh, Quincy Wiggins versus Will Campbell the first day of practice. Like, it was, you know, we got to see those things, but we don't really get to see, like, the one-on-ones with the offensive line and the defensive line. Paris Shen looks good in drills, but, I mean, everybody looks good in drills. Yeah. He's just supreme athletes moving around in space. So, but somebody in the chat made a point about Zy Alexander. That's another one. Like I said, Brian Kelly alluded to the fact that they probably won't just play two corners. So, Zy Alexander was a starter last year. He's coming off an injury. I'm sure he'll work his way back in there somehow, too. So it's like you got – you at least have four to five guys that you know you trust enough to play. Like, J.K. – I throw J.K. Johnson in there, too. For sure. So you got – that's five. Is he out there? Yeah, he he's another one that runs first team sometimes, too, on the same side with Toviano and – Woodland. And Woodland. So it's like I would say Stamps is probably – the top corner, like that's who they trust the most, and then after that, you kind of got, kind of starting to have a pecking order. But I don't really know if it's solidified just because it's spring. Yeah, Deshaun McBride. Deshaun McBride looks. Because that's so that's the name that you keep hearing, right? Between I, him and PJ Woodland, both freshmen. Yeah, I don't know how they keep him off the field. I don't know how they keep Jordan Allen off the field. It's a few guys that you just like. You see them, and it's like I don't, I don't understand how they would keep them off the field. But you do have veterans, so it's like I'm just interested to see once the season gets here how they mix the veterans with the young players because they have a a, a good mix of veteran players and young players. Well, there'll be a huge shakeup, you would think, on the roster too. I mean, to get mm -hmm. these numbers right, you know, obviously yeah. with the second portal about to open up, they're going to have to make some moves. To I mean, you know, Bear Alexander's in the market. You got to LSU. If he goes to LSU, you got to make a yeah. spot for him. I mean, you get to tell Jeez. somebody S we, need the, we need that scholarship. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, LSU's got some. They have some maneuvering to do, and you know, right now is is when you see all of that making. You know, really, kind of the decisions being made on on all of that right now. So, uh, we'll talk more to Wilson Alexander coming up here about some, some, some practice reports and what's going on there. Uh, we'll also ask him about what his thoughts are on uh, Brian Kelly meeting with the media and just where they are right now uh, after hearing uh, from both coordinators and Joe Sloan and obviously Blake Baker uh, this spring ball and what he's looking forward to in the spring game, which is coming up this Saturday. What, what, what would be your point of emphasis, Stewie, if you're going to this? Are you going to make this weekend mm -hmm. spring break? What, what, are, you, what are you looking for? 
I'm just looking for the defense to just show some, you know, show some strides just from last season, just kind of closing the book on last year and, like, just showing that the new staff and a couple new players, like, you just got a fresh look. I'm just looking for a fresh look from the defense. Offensively, I mean, I just want to see who emerges as that third receiver Mm -hmm. because, like, I I was kind of thinking about it last night and, like, Receiver-wise, you got Kyron. I'd say right now Kyron's one, wide receiver one. Two, Chris Hilton, no doubt. And then three, that's where you kind of get, like, the Aaron Anderson, Xavion Thomas, C.J. Daniels. Like, And I think that order will work itself out at some point. But right now, since it's just still spring and they still haven't gotten some guys in, it's just like I'm going to go Lacey. Chris Hilton, Aaron Anderson, just to start. And then once they flip out. Yeah, it's going to be that slot yeah. position that you'll have multiple guys yeah. coming in and out of. That's what, and obviously from the defensive side, I think Perkins. Yeah. This is a big, like you saw that some, uh, I think he was talking with Wilson Alexander that we have uh, a couple of clips of. But, I mean, this is his, we, we talk about it all the time, this is his money year. And it's, the, it's back to, it wasn't just Matt House that wanted to play linebacker. Obviously, Blake Baker comes in and says, I saw the vision. I see the idea of how you want to use him. And he's moved in. He says primarily he's playing little linebacker, and that's the plan. So I think you'll even be able to see something in terms of whether it be progress or how he looks from the spring game. Like, you usually don't get a ton. But from a position like that, you will be able to see the the, the maturation maybe of Harold Perkins at linebacker. Do we have the Perk mm-hmm. audio? And this is from yesterday. Um, it's been very rare that Perkins has been – um, allowed to speak to the media uh, via LSU yesterday. They had him speaking, and here's what some of what he had to say yesterday uh, following practice. Well, it's like my development, like I said, Coach Baker. He do a good job of helping helping all backers with that. He he wants to see us be good and or not be good, but great and be consistent. That's that's really what our focus is: is being consistent. Is, is there been anything in particular you've been really, really trying to work on as a as a as an inside linebacker? Like anything technically? Just what 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 has been, I guess, kind of the big thing you're working just, on? Just just being patient. Like I'm always so quick to go go go. Just being patient and. Uh, being good with my eyes. I feel like that's a big thing with uh, being inside backer and be- playing football in general, just your eyes. You got to make sure your eyes are in the right spot. So, Was that maybe part of an issue last year with why, like after the first game, y'all had to move you around a little bit? What did you find playing inside linebacker for the first time that wasn't quite there yet for you? No. Nah, uh, last year and in the other years, it's just like we got to do what's best for the team. Like me playing inside backer was I didn't they didn't feel it was the best fit, so I had to move. You had to get moved around. Harold Perkins yesterday speaking with the media following practice. You can hear people. Uh, you can hear uh, Alexander, uh, or excuse me, you can hear uh, Perkins speaking about some of the uh, development and some of the steps that he has taken here uh, under Blake Baker and at LSU. Uh, over the last couple of seasons and now here over the last couple of months now that Baker has been on the job and some of the emphasis of what they've been paying attention to. So we'll talk to uh, Wilson Alexander. Alexander, of course, in that press gaggle there uh, that was uh, around Perkins and asking him a bunch of uh, questions. Yeah, let's listen to it. (laughs) It ain't ain't really no excuses. You got to get the job done. We got to get the job done. Everybody looking at me. So I can't come with no excuses. I got to do my part and play my role, and I got to do it to a T. Like, I'm a dog. Like, uh, it ain't, it ain't. We need to cut that up and just have that right there. <laughs> Let it live. I think I'm growing. It. <laughs> I mean. Oh, I got this one too. I feel like every day that I come in here, I grow and, and, and get 1% better as a player. And um, as far as, like, um, I think I'm growing as a player. I feel like every day that I come in here, I grow and, and, and get one percent better as a player. And um, as that sweatshirt's as like, awesome. That's the that's yeah, the Travis Scott. Scott. Mm-hmm. God, he's making a killing doing that. Yes, the whole the whole like the whole collection is good. Though. Like is. the hoodie, the sweatpants. They got the shorts. I saw a book sack. BK okay. ended it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> he had the, he had the <laughs> Travis Scott shoes on. Like they got him in the whole deal <laughs> on the jet, the jet ski. ski. Yeah. He's probably at the concert, <laughs> living his best life, man. About to get Travis Scott braids. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I see what you're on about. 
<laughs> um, so there is so spring game this Saturday, mm-hmm. one p.m. I mean. In the past, we've seen Brian Kelly not want to do a spring game. Yeah, I think it's probably the same thing. Yeah, it seems like the same thing. They're doing like individual drills for an hour, and then they burn the time up, right? And then they will scrimmage for probably about an hour. But I mean, we finally get to see him, you know, strap it up live and kind of hit each other and not thud. You know, we get like real live action. Yeah, without question. Uh, uh, would you go? Or, or are you going to the uh, uh, to to the LSU spring game? We'll put it up on the poll, Stewie, uh, and let our uh, let our let, let our viewers take a a vote there. Uh, what's the interest around this year's spring game uh, going into Saturday? As uh, LSU baseball will be traveling. Usually, they try to uh, coincide this uh, with a home LSU baseball game, where you've got everybody on campus. Uh, you haven't seen the push of really loading this thing up like there has been in years past uh, of trying to get you know people out to campus and make this a big celebration and a big event uh, like it has been used in, in, in like we said, in years past. So um, are, are you interested? Are you going? If you are, what are you most looking forward to watching? What are the storylines that you are looking forward to, to, to seeing um, and – Get involved. Get in. Uh, interact with us inside of the chat. If you want to uh, put those inside of the chat, let us know, uh, and we will uh, talk about some of the points because we got Wilson Alexander coming up here, uh, who can talk about some of and all of the storylines that have been developing over spring and some of the things that going in uh, to the uh, to the spring game uh, of what you can watch. And you know, from a recruiting standpoint, LSU uh, it never stops, right? I mean, you've got. Uh, obviously, the high school recruiting that's always in full swing, but goes through periods where you know you can't communicate or dead periods. And right now, you've got transfer recruiting that's happening right now, and LSU is hosting another transfer portal defensive lineman uh, target out of Indiana, who is here today, uh, Philip Blitty, uh, who is going to arrive on campus today, is coming off of a season with the Hoosiers, in which he started 11 games, played in 12, uh, had a couple of uh, tackles for loss. Uh, He had over 29, 25 tackles this season. Uh, He spent three seasons at Texas Tech uh, prior to transferring over to Indiana. Uh, He's coming off of a visit uh, to Washington. Uh, He is um, now called off the Arizona visit. Um, as uh, he takes the midweek trip to LSU, then he's going to visit Oklahoma uh, April 19th and the tw- uh, through the 21st. Uh, Texas A&M and Auburn are a couple of other programs to watch here as they've been pushing on Blitty, but uh, LSU will have their chance today uh, after uh, being able to land one guy in the portal up until this point, Gio Paez uh, from Wisconsin. Uh, who pledged to LSU and is actually here in Baton Rouge now. Um, we'll uh, see if LSU can add to that portal class uh, with a guy like Blitty, uh, who is in town today uh, from Indiana. So um, you've got the you, you've got you, you've got recruiting obviously with high school targets, and then you've got uh, transfer portal recruiting, which is about to get into really full swing here. Uh, but a couple of the early on. Uh, prospects to watch is a guy like Blitty who will be in town today. If you wanna, if you if you wanna keep up with this transfer portal thing, Hayes Fawcett is the the perfect follow on any social media. He is the the god when it comes to transfer portal news, any type of commitment, anything you will know first from Hayes Fawcett because all these kids they tell Hayes Fawcett everything. They do because he makes the graphics right. So. What a way to shoehorn your way into the business. It is. Right. Like, you started off just making graphics for, like, commitments, and now it becomes with the transfer portal, you're able to get, like, he probably knows more than anybody about, uh, like, a decision date before it happens. Well, I mean, he sent out a tweet. He does. Yeah, he sent out a tweet, like, probably three weeks ago, and he was like, y'all think, like, these commitments are crazy, or these visits that these kids are taking, or the schools that they're talking about. Wait till the transfer portal opens up. You'll see a whole hell of a lot more. So... That's the follow if you want to keep up with all transfer portal news. Uh, Hayes Fawcett is a part of the On3 team, uh, so make sure and follow him. He does great work 
It is going to uh, – we will keep the conversation moving on LSU football with Wilson Alexander coming up here shortly. Also, another running back uh, offer out yesterday, JT Lindsey. Ash. Well, they offered him. The country. Yeah, they offered yep. him yesterday. Offered him. So, A-Town I mean, stand up. Is I guess – the James Simon thing, I, I guess they don't know where he stands as far as a commitment because he's been in town multiple times, hasn't popped a commitment yet. So I guess Corey, Frank Wilson has, you know, extended another offer in Louisiana, another great back. So like you can't go wrong with either of them. So, I mean, I guess they're either taking all three or that's just an offer to say, well, if James Simon goes elsewhere, we have mm -hmm. contingency plan. Yeah, Lindsay Lindsay. as well. Right. Um, I mean, all of the highlights on Lindsay are fantastic, man. I mean, obviously, but I mean, just he checks all the boxes. Yeah. I mean, size, speed, durability. He seems to be the complete back. And I was so impressed with Simon. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, I, I cannot describe Holy how teeth. impressive <laughs> Simon was in the dome. Um, you know, on a weekend that Trey Des Green really dominated. The competition, James Simon was probably the most impressive player, him and Green that that played all weekend in in the dome. And you know, I mean, to 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 think of him as, as an option alongside Harlem Barry, um, possibly having Lindsey in that backfield and and an older Caden Durham. I mean, that is cool. almost getting back to an old Frank Wilson running back. Room it is. Where I'll just stack the room and right. We'll just we'll just take everybody. Right. We don't, have to, we don't we'll have to. We get run Terrence that. McGee. We will get Alfred Blue. We will get Kenny Hilliard. <laughs> Jeremy Hill. We get them all. We get them all. And I mean, I think that's like that's a good recipe for a young running back, just because of the way they treat running backs at the next level. You don't get as much tread on the tires, but you also get yeah. the sample size that you need to show the next level that you can do it. But you don't have as much tread. Yeah, the gone are the days of like a. 25 to 30 carry back every game that you would have like that you would used to have like a yeah. obviously Leonard Fournette did it there are like Todd Jer Gurley Jeremy Hill Jeremy no. Hill where it was one guy that there's a future back and it's not because they're not good it's just the way that the offenses have changed in football and being able to do multiple things with multiple backs is only a good thing and JT Lindsay was talking about getting the offer from from Frank and he said um it was heartwarming I've been waiting on this one since I was little Lindsay told the Bengal Tiger staff after practice, Coach Frank brought me in, brought me and my coach to his office. We had a meeting, and he said, I'm a great kid, but not at my full potential yet, and he wants to take me there. I had the biggest smile ever. It's a kid's dream. I know now more schools will be looking at me, but I'm just really glad to have this offer. I mean, everybody in Alexandria wants to go to LSU. Like, that's pretty much the spot, even if it's not athletically. Like, that's just where you go. Sure. So it's probably been on his radar for a long time, especially to be able to play football there. Um, we'll talk more about LSU coming up here with uh, both Jacques and Wilson Alexander in the second hour. Uh, remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Gordon McKernan and the G-Squad. Get in touch with Gordon at online at getgordon.com, or you can dial him up at 225-888-8888 is where you find him as far as you can dial him anywhere in the state. He's got locations all over the state of Louisiana and you can find him, uh, as we said, with over um, a ton of five-star reviews on Google. Uh, GetGordon.com is where you can find him online. Louisiana's big truck lawyer uh, and somebody who uh, obviously cares about student athletes all over the state with the NIL deals that he struck, not only with LSU student athletes, but uh, universities and colleges and players from, from everywhere. Uh, so get Gordon, uh, GetGordon.com. Um, and we appreciate our partnership always and being a part of the G-Squad. Uh, so come back with us. We will have uh, Wilson Alexander and Jacques stopping by here shortly. Uh, we'll talk more LSU football. Uh, we will talk a little bit about what's happening around LSU baseball as the Tigers travel to Knoxville today. Uh, but make sure you're staying safe out there. It is uh, uh, reports of winds and rain all over the state today so make sure you stay safe as as we said no school for the kids uh as it's been called off down here in south louisiana uh so uh, they may have gotten one right usually when they call school off uh, that usually means that it's nothing but blue skies <laughs> and and sunshine um but it seems like today and this morning uh might be a little wicked with the weather so uh, make sure and stay safe out there. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Come back with us.
Got my headphones up, bro. Redstick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Redstick Sports. Check them out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. For a hole in your roof, for a hole in your roof. Go roof. Roof, roof. Go roof. Hey, Greg. Roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana and practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work with the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. And get it done. Yeah, everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done leave with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rice sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm with Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, a champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon. And get it done.
What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Rusa. Rusa. Hold on. Rusa. 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 Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordi Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin, Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, roll with Rosie, or get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in South Down Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop-in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar. South Down Shopping Center and online philsoysterbar.com. Yeah, right there. Now I'm focused on getting deposits. Evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it. They said I need the soul searching, I already found it. I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded. Drive by and let it ride like a whip in a Tesla. Pressure never fades me, cause I'm bigger than pressure. I'm on my grind, bullshit. Can't fit on my schedule. I'ma do what's best with me, you can keep all your lectures. Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November. Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December. I got niggas on the blood like traditional sinners. OGs love me, so I hang with traditional winners. I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up. Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter. Heat up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the carter. Coming back like KD, it's time. All right, welcome back here, Jordy Collada Show. Seems as if this weather's for real. Um, be careful out there. <laughs> Stay inside. Be yeah. safe out there. I mean, we're getting reports of like 80 mile an hour wind gusts. Find sturdy shelter. That's what they, they Stay say. away from the windows. I mean, is it disrespectful that I just texted Dr. Steve Caparato? He's probably like, are you out of your mind? He's probably, it's probably doing a hit. <laughs> no, he definitely is. But I mean, three minutes, Doc? Yeah. yeah. Give us an update. Super Bowl the, Sunday for him. Though. Let the people know. Oh, yeah. I mean, big weather day. Big weather guy. 
We've had a more enduring, we've had a more enduring weather crises before that we usually makes time for us. Old Cap, you notice know, he's got to get the people the message. Right. I mean, you could call Jay Johnson. He's a big weather guy. He's a huge Ooh. weather guy. <laughs> Knows when it's about to rain. <laughs> Wind must hey, be coach, out I want to talk to you every uh, to, to you about everything but, <laughs> but your team, but, but baseball. Yeah, he'd be like, I'm oh, in finally. Yes, <laughs> you got south winds coming in, 15 miles an hour with strong gusts. <laughs> like, Bear Johnson going today. to straight meteorologist mode. Yeah, Bear Jones left a mistake. He knew it. <laughs> Wind's blowing out. Got to bat him lead off. Guy's got to do anything he can to find some spark with his team, man. That was that was. I mean, the, you can't hide from fastballs in the top spot, right? No, you don't want to walk him, right? You don't want to put him on base. But that's. I think Bear Jones also leads the team in strikeouts. If it's, it's okay. not him, it's Kling. But okay. the uh, the threat of him at the top of the lineup was something I did not have on the bingo card. I mean. Jay Johnson, I, he said yesterday in his presser, he was like, I think I wasted more paper than anybody in the state of Louisiana <laughs> trying to find a lineup. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> well, I saw that he didn't get it written up till like a, like 90 he, minutes before. Yeah, he said it was, yeah, like 30 minutes before the game. When usually, yeah, this is like he, the night before. Yeah, he's very calculated, and he usually doesn't let the lineup out, but it's not because it wasn't written Shot. down. This was a, I uh, don't know where I want to put anybody in the lineup, mm. so... Obviously found the right mix, and I'd imagine that, I mean, after you put up, what was it, 16? 16, 16 runs, I'd imagine that you kind of run that thing back. The allowed most, 16, too. Yeah. Allowed 16. And the most impressive part outside of, obviously, what Bear Jones did is they finally got, they were able to get a little lucky with uh, an error from McNeese early on, but then the, the, the train ever stopped rolling. They were able to get hits with runners in scoring positions and continued to put up crooked numbers after they scored five they still had back-to-back innings where they put two on the board and i think a lot of that has to do with paxton kling might be finding something yes, here yeah. too man what's up brother yeah, it's up brother yeah it's almost like you <laughs> you gotta get to the bottom of it in baseball before yeah. you can really kind of start your way out because he was at the, he was in davy jones's locker it mm-hmm. felt like it was he was about to get to that point zero seven. Oof. Range. He was about to get to the point where I don't think I'd want to play baseball I'm exactly anymore. Right. I'm yeah. seeing my zero. major again. <laughs> I'm yeah. seeing zeros in front of my bat and average, and I don't I mean, like it. Draft eligible, and that there was a lot of chatter about that. That's what draft maybe eligible. he was putting a little right. bit too much pressure on himself because he does have the tools to be able to go early in the draft. But a lot of it was him being very aggressive and trying to pull everything, and now he is. Settled back in a little bit. I'm not saying he's ter- completely turned the corner, right? right but he's right. been able but to. No, it looks. It, it definitely looks, looks a little bit it more. It looks oh, different. Yeah. Looks a little bit more. I mean, coach, he was shaky up there, man. He I mean, it looked like he was going up there, and I'm in in his head. He was like, "I'm about to get out, no doubt." And I'm gonna take three pitches. You and I'm can gonna tell walk back when to he was dugout. walking from the yawn deck circle to 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 the batter's box. It was like, I don't no be, how quick can I get back to the dugout? I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no like, or no plate presence. Are there people in the stands? There's Damn. ten thousand here, Paxton. And we're on ESPN today. Yeah, I mean, like we're on a, we're on national television, buddy. <laughs> don't bang, worry. bang bang. It'll be over quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's what Mikey says. He's like, you get to a spot where oh, you're bad. struggling, you see it. where it feels like you step in the batter's box and it's already 0-2. And that was happening. It was literally happening to Kling where it right. was two pitches. And we talked about this, and nobody has an answer for me, and I don't know. Nobody can explain it. He didn't do it last night, which was good to see. The fake bunt mm-hmm. that he was doing, essentially giving up on mm-hmm. a strike where he wasn't even trying to bunt a yeah. strike. He, right. was just he was just squaring around. Give me a to, pitch. Let me see I it come see in, how but I'm it not going to bunt it and then yesterday he finally it was on balance swings it wasn't mm-hmm. swinging and missing and chasing where he was I mean, you could tell he was pressing in the batter's box yeah. it was he was thinking about you could have asked him if he was left-handed or right-handed on the mound and he would have been able to tell you uh. and mikey and mikey <laughs> mikey gets that he said you can get there in baseball he goes i remember whenever i was Go in the, up there with your hands twisted you know, and he goes i was in the bigs and he goes there was times where i think i was 0 for 28 he goes i was literally praying on deck circle, on like on the on deck circle, that the guy in front of me would get out, so I wouldn't have to bat. Oh god! And I was like, a, that's you could, terrible, you could, terrible. You could get that far down the rabbit hole of this is hard. Oh, and so it's good to see Paxton Kling maybe be able to get out and turn the corner because that's what LSU was missing. Man, they needed somebody to kind of put some stability in that lineup. And if you get Kling back right, that could change. That could change a lot for what you saw from LSU baseball. That would be very. And you're starting to see Larson step up and play better. Like some of these spots where they just were, they weren't consistent in the lineup. Like if you can get those role players back to being able to con- being able to contribute, you don't have to rely on just 
Bear Jones, Travinsky, and Tommy White, if you have six other guys that can contribute, then you start looking at a lineup that can put up, put up more numbers. Then you don't have to be so reliant on a pitching staff that every time it felt like they went in, they were pitching for their life. For sure. And every situation was dire. And another thing that you saw yesterday was the Cade Wood sighting, which I thought was interesting. He's been, obviously it'd have to be injury. I would imagine he only threw one inning in his LSU career, and he finally gets back out there, gets a big strikeout, and looked. It, he, he was not throwing uh, encumbered. He was letting that thing eat. Mm. And Cam Johnson pinched last night, too. So he's continued to get to work and uh, work out of the bullpen. Walked one, struck out one. Wilson's going to come up here at 8.15. Uh, when, Jacques at 8.30. But it's like when Cam Johnson is on, he's <laughs> on. Like It looks so Gosh, good. 96 from the left side. That where, is where, nasty. Where is that? Where does that exist? I, mean, I know it doesn't exist in the SEC. It, it's not, yeah. That's, in the major leagues. That's okay. yeah. it exists, Where is that? Hagen Smith, that's it. Yeah, Hagen Smith that's does the one. that. And he has an absolute wipeout slider that when he's right, you can see all, that he has all the potential in the world. He just has to be able to do it consistently because one thing you can't do on this baseball team, and it's been well known, is you cannot walk anybody because he's done with that. Sammy Dutton came in and pitched yesterday, yeah. and he has yeah. issued his first walk of the year. And that's somebody that's going to continue to keep playing. And Aiden Moffitt looked good, too. So I know it was McNeese, but they've struggled against McNeese within, I don't know, the last five or so years where I think it would, I think they're like 6-4 and four against McNeese. So they've been able to beat LSU um, in the past. But that was as, as promising of a game as you can have going into Tennessee series that probably has the best offense in the SEC. And you'll be able to hopefully take some – some pitching there, hopefully get a win on Friday with Holman and then string one more together where your offense can actually carry you to one as opposed to having to hold teams to three and four runs and try to eke out a win. It is very frustrating, though, because when, when you do see the arms that come out of the pin, it's like, wow, he throws 95. Wow, he throws 98. Like, Aiden Moffitt yeah, came Moffitt. in there throwing yeah. 98 last night. Like, it's like, how I, I can we the, not get this to throw thing. it straight? I thought the same thing. Oh, it's very got, frustrating. That's why, that's why everybody's so frustrated. The you talent can see is the always talent, there. It just, it's just flashing. And then whenever they – if you're issuing free passes at the rate that they are, it's impossible not to give up runs. And then you're consistently playing catch-up where you can't have a clean inning where you score two runs, you blank them, come back, and now you still have momentum on your side. It's been a seesaw of scoring two runs, giving up three. You're always in the fight. And that's why these games have been – like their losses aside from – on Sunday, you, sure. or the game three, however you want to phrase it, that can't happen. That's inexcusable. You can't lose three SEC series and then get ten run in three of those games. That's not LSU yeah. baseball. That's a, that's a sign of a team that looks defeated after they've lost. Yeah. But in those same series, you've had back-to-back. They had back-to-back appearances where they went extra innings with Florida and extra innings with Arkansas. So the, the talent's there. They just have to put everything together. And you saw – at least in my mind, a much more aggressive baseball team offensively where they got a bunt down and a guy and I think it was I think it was Larson scored from second on a on a squeeze play. So you had LSU taking the extra base, being aggressive on the base paths, and then being aggressive in the in the box. It was a different version of LSU. And I don't know if it's a product of Bear Jones being the leadoff hitter and getting them started. Stick with it. Or just yeah, I think that you'd have to stick with it. Or just having a uh, a different approach at the plate where everybody was but what if he leads that game off in Knoxville with a missile? He could. I mean, just hits one into Neyland. I mean, that's what. I mean, when Tommy White let off, that's what he did. I he know. started, got off one nothing. I know. Or just put him on the pond and let Tommy Tanks hit one out. Yeah, well, I think that's what they're. That's what yeah. the plan is. Let's right. get somebody on base. But now you cannot. You have to pitch to Bear Jones differently whenever he's Absolutely. a leadoff hitter as opposed to where he was in the lineup, and that's why you saw a lot of swing and misses because you could attack him because there's nobody on base. And there was probably, you know, yeah, one or two outs, and you yeah. didn't matter if you walked him or if you gave up a solo shot. This, you don't want to put him on base and then have the rest of the lineup behind him that can make turn it from a, an 0-0 game to a 2-0 game very quickly. Because with Bear Jones and Tommy White, those are two guys that can change the scoreboard in an instant. But like I said, the more impressive thing, aside from the home runs, was how they manufactured runs mm-hmm. as opposed to relying on just a, a boop and a blast. <laughs> uh, defensively as well. Yeah. Defensively, I thought was very impressive because that, it's been, man, I I can't recall when it, you get this tight when the balls hit into the field. 
But yeah, well, that you you saw Broswell get the day off, and it wasn't because of a performance based issue. He just said he's played in 35 straight games. We haven't taken him out the lineup. He needed a day. And you saw Kutrak come in as a freshman, and he looked it at the plate. But another guy that has all the talent in the world, and on the other side defensively, Tommy White's never been never played better uh-huh. at third. And then obviously Milam is a fantastic second baseman. But in the outfield, if you have Kling, that is the other side of the coin that you get with him. He can cover so much ground in the outfield that it really just makes you a better baseball team. So if he's able to just – he doesn't have to light the world on fire and bat right. over 600, but if he can – I think he's got the last three games, he has multi-hit games. So that's something that's actually real. It, it's not like he's just – flicking it out there and getting lucky he's actually putting together productive at bat no so. he looks like he's going up with an approach yes he has finally a, yes rather than being the approach is get me back to my apartment <laughs> yeah some of those <laughs> some of those swings when he was in the throes of it i mean he was swinging at pitches in the left-handed batter's box no and doubt. just had no clue like stepping oh my he could have yeah. fallen down it was it was yeah, it was, I mean, rough. He was corkscrewing himself into the dirt i mean it was he was pressing yeah there's I mean, no it, doubt it about it was hard it. to watch i mean yeah. in fact I, I would i would pose this question to you and like this is something that you know like you just got to sit around and talk about it never happened but like kind of the the biggest what if in the world you say you're a you're you 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 can do what the pros do you can play at that level if they if they treated you like a pro let's say that you stepped in and they're you're not like some just joe but you are like you are who you are oh but you're but, faking but, it but they they, they don't can, know they continue to play at their level what would be you think the hardest thing to do first Catch a pass in an NFL football game. Hit a shot in an NBA basketball game. And I say like a 15-footer. A 15-footer to a three-pointer. Or hit a major, hit a baseball from a like a, a, a big-time pitcher. Show hey. Yeah, you're not getting a hit. You're not, you're not getting a hit. <laughs> no. Like right. it would take, I'm telling you. Now, I don't know how long it'd take you to catch an, like a pass on an NFL field. You might be able to luck into a shot that yeah. they leave you open. Maybe right. though, but I'm talking about you're doing it in the NBA arena where you no got shot. six foot ten guys flying around you. You got twenty thousand in the stands. You got music playing. You got people yelling. You got the whole thing. The first one I'm picking is the NBA shot, just because I like, like you said, they might just because that's regular the, person. That's the one you could get the luckiest. Right, regular person, they might be like, "Oh, I could lack now, off of him on the 15th." No, you games. think that? Good. Yeah. You think you know how easy it is to make up ground of five foot nine on the NBA floor? Yeah. I'm five foot nine on the NBA floor. I think I'm open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Cat, then Carl Anthony Towns closes out on me Wimbenyana. Wimbenyana. and swats one into the fifth row. Wimbenyana. Like I'm wide open. I mean, like it's a catch. Not only do you have to get the open look, you have to hit it knowing that I'm not supposed to be out here. Yeah, exactly. Like, like your jersey doesn't fit. Your nuts would be in your stomach. Oh like, God, woo, 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 dude. Outlet, you're like, I'm oh going to smoke this layup. Oh, God. I say that because when we were, I was watching an LSU baseball game with a group of people, and Paxton Kling came up to bat, and a guy said out loud, it looks like I'm up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it looks like I would be so nervous. I'd be so tight and tense. You know what I mean? Like, like, I'm not going to be able to get like, hit. Uh, this, is, this is impossible. No, you might be able to run into contact. Maybe. 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 You just, like, throw the bat out there. And uh, you don't even think about the defensive side of baseball. They're hitting it 110 miles off miles per hour off the bat. Like, you're not going to be able to get a – you're not playing shortstop. Yeah. Like, you think you, you – right. they make it look very easy. You Field think, a scorcher? Yeah, you thought, you, like, even if you played in high school. <laughs> like, this <laughs> right, is a totally right. different league, dude. Different ball game Nobody ball. hit it 110 at you in high school. Like, Nobody Bear, Jones, a Bear Jones off the end of the bat went out to right field yesterday. What if, if he hits that – if he hits a seed to you at second, you're, you're olaying that thing oh so my fast. God. <laughs> Move it out the way. And, and football. Roger Dorn? Yeah, oh, God. Dorn, <laughs> get out there. If you all lay bullshit one yeah, more right. time. Luke, can I have a word with you? <laughs> it's in my contract. see right here in my contract <laughs> in States. <laughs> I don't have to do any extracurricular. Um, but they they asked the same question to um, Saquon Barkley. They were, at, they were like, can a normal person get a yard no as, a, as a running back? And he was like, yeah, you could get maybe get lucky. And then he goes – Hold on. There was a game when I played for the 
the Giants where I had 15 carries in one yard. He goes, I consider myself a pretty good running back. Yeah. So, no, I don't think you could. Yeah, there's no way, like, you'd be able to get off the line of scrimmage no, against an so NFL fast. DB. No. You know, no like, way. I mean, like, if an NFL DB was like, I'm about to lock your ass up. His guy, his guy. Yeah. Like, I'm about to, I'm about to play technique. I'm about to play aggressive, and I'm about to compete with you. Hell in the cell. Like, Enjoy yourself today. You wouldn't get off the line of scrimmage. No, I'm talking about past the line of scrimmage. Bubble, not, first of all, a bubble screen. A bubble screen to a, get you killed. To a regular worse. person, I mean, I, you know how much. Ask Reggie Bush about a bubble screen. Right, yeah. You know how much disrespect uh, we NFL missing? safety. We did. Hey, he's back. Okay. All right. You know how much disrespect an NFL safety would take to that? Oh, like a regular God. you. Like Chris Sean Taylor. Cam, oh, my God. Cam Chancellor. Sean Taylor would try to come kill you. Cam I Chancellor. Mean, he did it in the Pro Bowl to a punter. <laughs> exactly. He didn't give a shit. No. It was unbelievable. They were trying to have fun. <laughs> That's all like, not on my football Sean field. Taylor killed the Pro Bowl. He did. He, did. he absolutely did. <laughs> we had Wilson. He got out. I don't know if he's getting back in. It looks like he's in his room. Had it, Wilson, today. Had it? Yes. Oh. Uh. Raining outside. Mm. One of those One days. Of those days. Bad hair day. They don't uh, have no bad such thing. Hair in that, no yeah. such thing in that. It's in just that never. World. It's just. Uh, he has a just, certain standard. Can't, can't hold the rope. Yes. Ooh. On certain days. Is he in there or no? Wilson? Good to go, Wilson. Uh, Wilson Alexander, award winner from the Advocate Nola dot com. He covers LSU football as good as anyone. Make sure you're following him on uh, all social media at wh Alexander underscore to keep up with everything. Spring game this Saturday, Wilson. We asked our crew. We asked our listening audience how much interest there is in this spring game. You don't feel that big promotional push that you felt from LSU in years past, but uh, from somebody who covers the who covers the program, how do you feel the outside interest is? What's the buzz going into Saturday? I don't know. I guess it kind of feels pretty low. Also, I hope you guys can hear me. For some okay. reason, my AirPods are in my ears and then like not working at all. So anyway, um, you know, it's just like it's like somewhat kind of low. I mean, you know, LSU, you don't have like a quarterback battle going on or anything like that, which always would create more buzz. Um, you know, it seemed like there was certainly some interest in this spring with, you know, there's some tangible stuff that we learned that's actually going to be applicable to what this team does in the season with like the run game changing and some of Blake Baker's schemes and like Harold Perkins playing inside linebacker, even though, you know, you know, we learned somewhat, you know, talking to him yesterday about how that's going, but still, you know, no one's going to really know for sure if it's going to pan out until the season starts. But, you know, there is some stuff that's happened that is applicable to the season. But I guess, I don't know, people around here don't really seem to get too jazzed for spring games anyway, um, seeing as, you know, I don't know, there's not ever a lot of people in the stadium or anything like that. Um, but it should still be a, an interesting game on Saturday in terms of, you know, it's football. So who can complain about that? Uh, Wilson, you had a chance to speak with Harold Perkins yesterday with the rest of the media assortment. You heard a couple of questions that you were asking him. Uh, what would you learn from the star-studded linebacker? Well, you know, he said that Blake Baker and Brian Kelly, like there wasn't like a conversation between the three of them about him moving back to inside linebacker, but he doesn't, he was like, ah, it doesn't matter. Like he, the thing that Harold kept saying, and we've heard this from him when we talked to him very briefly after the Missouri game last year too, is that he just doesn't really care. Like, he describes himself as a football player. He's like, I'll play defensive line. I'll play quarterback. I'll play safety mm. and, like, list it up, like, all the positions. He's like, he's like, I- I'm just going to be a football player. He's like, I'm a dog. Like, I don't, I'll, I'll, it doesn't matter. I'm an athlete. Like, it, it, um, I think that's kind of the attitude that he just has going into this is that, um, you know, he just wants to do whatever he, you know, the team thinks is best for him. Uh, asked him, you know, what was it about last year? Like, what happened after that first game? You know, why didn't it really pan out playing inside linebacker? And he's like, the coaches didn't think it's what was best for the team, so they moved me. And um, he didn't really seem to be, you know, too uh, torn up about it, at least, you know, publicly like this. Um, you know, and the other thing was that he really seems to be connecting with Blake Baker. Yeah. Uh, and he said he loves getting coached by Blake. Um, you know, really likes just sort of the human uh, side that he coaches with, like, you know, taking an interest in these guys as people. And, uh, you know, he thinks that he's learned a lot from them. And he's starting to, to grow as an inside linebacker. So, um, you know, it sounds like things are headed in the right direction in Harold's mind uh, as they wrap up with spring ball. Uh, the defensive back room seems like it is one that, that, that is getting some – some players in it, and whether it's through the high school ranks or you're talking about some guys that have transferred in. I know Stewie, Jacob Stewart, our guy who has been out at practice, has been very impressed with P.J. Woodland. 
who is a true freshman early enrollee that seems to be getting the hardest of Coach Corey Raymond's coaching here early on in his days. What do you see here from a, uh, a Mississippi standout in P.J. Woodland that is that is here early? Yeah, three-star signee, early enrollee, and he's kind of shot up the depth chart. You know, he, we saw him. There was a play that I think a lot of people saw a video of Kyron Lacey make last Thursday or so at practice where he caught this ball down the sideline. Really smooth catch. P.J. Woodland was right there in coverage. Um, the thing is, like, P.J. was on his hip. Like, we have a picture that our photographer took of that play where yeah. P.J.'s got a hand across his chest. Um, you know, he's, like, doing everything you would need to. Kyron just made a great play. Like, it wasn't necessarily that P.J. wasn't there. Um, you know, LSU's been matching him up against his top receivers. And, you know, he's gotten beat at times because, well, that happens regardless of who you are. But also, this is an early, early freshman. But he's also, you know, made some plays. And he's just competed for the ball. Um, he looks physical. Um, even though he's 5'11", 160 pounds listed by LSU, like, he doesn't really – that size doesn't seem to be – like, uh, he doesn't seem to care. Like, you know, he'll put his hat in there. Um, he goes out there and tries to make plays. And um, is it a representative of LSU, maybe a bad situation in corner? Like last year, like kind of with Ashton Stamps rising at the depth chart in preseason, um, sort of ended up meaning kind of two things. Like Ashton had a great preseason camp, but also like LSU wasn't great at corner. Um, we'll have to see, you know, at this point, I think it's probably just mostly indicative that, you know, PJ's putting himself in the mix here for early playing time. And um, it's a really good sign for the rest of his career as well. Because, I mean, gosh, when you can be getting first team reps, already um that's a really great thing are they building depth there i mean when you talk about jk johnson a guy that we didn't see last year or toviano who's now really primarily training there are are we seeing some depth started to be built in the defensive back room that was very depleted last season we are starting to see some uh, but it's hard necessarily to like know exactly kind of where the whole cornerback uh competition stands, I guess, at this point. Because, like, yeah, Toviano was getting a lot of run with the first-team offense uh, for most of the spring here until P.J. kind of shot up the depth chart. But that's still a guy who, you know, has now started three games last year as a freshman and played a little bit of football uh, at the college level. You know, J.K. Johnson looks like he's been kind of limited by an injury of some kind uh, for most of the spring here. But then, like, he's kind of getting back up to speed here toward the end of spring practice. It'll be interesting to see what he does on Saturday. You know, obviously, Alexander is still out. Um, but, like, you know, when you talk about building depth, like, I think they are because there's some continuity year to, you know, from last year to this year, we have a lot of the same players uh, still there. Um, and then you've also now got, you know, three incoming freshmen who aren't even here yet who will get here in the summer. Um, and so they are starting to get to a point where at least, you know, they're not going through the, the portal like they did the last few years. And uh, I think that is a sign that they're building some depth. Is it quality depth that's going to be able to, you know, turn around this room right now this season? Um, you know, maybe not. We'll have to see kind of how it plays out. It might be still a multi-year thing, um, but they are, do seem like they're just in a more uh, stable place than they were kind of at this time a year ago. Uh, Wilson, what have you seen from Kimo Makinoli? I don't, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but what have you seen from him, the offensive lineman turned defensive lineman? What have you seen from him this spring and moving forward? Yeah, I think you are saying his name right. I think it's Macanioli. And, you know, we've seen a guy who's played with the first team defense a good bit here in the spring. Um, it's hard for me to know, like, for sure, oh, you know, is his technique good? Um, you know, is that kind of thing. Um, but the, the the fact that this is a guy who just, like we said, flipped over to the other side of the ball here in spring practice and got a lot of run with the first team is probably indicative of a defensive line room, a defensive tackle room that is uh, – going to be, you know, needs to add these transfers here in a couple of weeks. Um, but it is somebody who has, you know, at least made the staff consider him. Um, and they want, you know, they want to clearly see what he can do, if he can be a factor in that. Um, and, you know, he looks like he holds his own here at times, but also um, LSU's run defense, uh, there's been some moments when the offensive line is just absolutely dominated. Um, especially up the middle, there's a few plays that last Saturday's practice where guys weren't like even touched until they're like eight yards up the field. Um, and so, you know, Brian Kelly basically said, you know, that Jacoby and Guillory has been outstanding with his run defense. You know, I think that you would expect for him to have a role on first and second down, but that second defensive tackle spot where you've got Kimo and Jalen Lee and some of the guys are, it's still kind of uh, uncertain right now. I mean, you know, like we said, they already added Piaz. Um, they're going to probably add some more transfers here in the second portal window. And so, you know, Kimo is, uh, seems like he's done a solid job this spring. 
Um, but, you know, it's not like he's going to necessarily, um, you know, be in line for a starting position uh, come the season. It's, that's going to, I think it's, you know, that defensive tackle room is far from uh, determined at this point. Yeah, it seems like this is going to be the area of real dedication when the transfer portal opens up. We see today that they are hosting Philip Blitty, I believe is his name, from uh, Indiana. And then news yesterday broke that Bear Alexander, the talented former Georgia, former USC, I guess former now USC defensive lineman, is putting his name in. Wilson, you've covered all angles of LSU football over the last couple of years. As far as plans being put together on going after positions of need from a NIL standpoint or a a recruiting pitch standpoint, how aggressive is LSU going to be specifically when it comes to defensive linemen? Well, that's what's going to be kind of fascinating because, you know, traditionally, philosophically, uh, LSU doesn't commit as much through the transfer portal in terms of NIL as it wants to put commit to its incoming freshmen. You know, it, it, its priorities are sort of like, you know, recruiting coming freshmen, use the money that in, you know, in effort to retain players, and then, you know, hit the transfer portal as needed. And uh, doesn't seem to often, like, go after those big-time transfers um, that demand as quite as much NIL money um, because philosophically it's not quite what they've done the last few years. But now you've got to deal with the tackle position that, like, you might have no choice in some ways. Those, especially at that position, that position is going to demand quite a bit of money on the open market, um, which is what this is, you know, in, in the second portal window. There's going to be a lot of teams that want defensive tackles, and LSU is right there uh, needing them as well. Um, from what I understand, there is, you know, certainly enough LNIL money uh, that LSU has available, uh, with you know, the LSU's collective has available, you know, to be competitive in this space here, this, uh, um, you know, this second portal window, you know, had some things lined up for guys who you know, didn't return, and so now there's, there's some capital available. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, how uh, the collective kind of decides to allocate that um, and, you know, kind of how all that stuff ends up going down in a few weeks. I think LSU's, you know, in position to, to get some of these top defensive tackles, at least, um, you know, it depends on who comes into the portal and we'll see kind of how it all shakes out. Um, but like I said, philosophically, it is a little bit different for LSU to uh, really commit hard to transfers um, because that's not necessarily what they've done under Brian Kelly. Uh, one position that we've seen or heard LSU speak openly about being aggressive that they're going after in the portal is going to be running back. I, I wonder, are you able to find out, does, does the news of Trey Holly last week maybe change those plans? Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, because the thing is, Trey's, you know, this case still isn't wrapped up. Like, obviously, yeah. Trey's in a, a much better spot than he was uh, before the grand jury uh, rejected that charge of attempted second-degree murder. Anytime you can take that off of, uh, you know, your charges, that, that's uh, fantastic news for Trey, um, who, you know, this entire time has maintained 100% innocence. But he still does face that one felony count of um, essentially legal discharge of a weapon. And... You know, the, there's an arraignment set for April 17th, his lawyer told me last Friday, but he also said that they were going to have to try to reschedule that because of a scheduling conflict with another case. Um, and so we don't know exactly, you know, this isn't wrapped up yet. And so I think it's probably, a, you know, signs, LSU is optimistic, um, but, it, you know, this isn't done uh, at this point that he'll be clear. Um, obviously, you know, like Brian Kelly said, they're going to welcome him back. He'll be back on the team if he gets legally cleared, but um, he does still face a felony count here. And so they've got to, he's got to get past that. Yeah, he'll plead not guilty. Um, but until then, you know, it's still hard to like necessarily, uh, you know, signs are pointing in the right direction, um, but they don't nec- they don't have him back yet. And so um, once they do have him back, though, um, it probably does change the calculus there a little bit because four scholarship running backs, um, you know, it, you might prefer five, uh, but four probably is enough to get you through the season. It is a little shaky if you sustain an injury here or there. So else you'll, you know, might look. Um, just to see what's out there. But this is also a team that's over the scholarship limit at the moment. And like we already just mentioned a minute ago, needs to add these defensive tackles. And so, you know, there's going to be some attrition after spring, but it might be kind of a numbers game. And it might kind of depend on the amount of attrition and the number of defensive tackles that they want to add as to whether or not they have space for a running back. Wilson Alexander covers the program. It's a big week for LSU football as they're wrapping up spring. Wilson, as they've gone through the practices here and one more on the field practice before spring game on Saturday. Um, and I know that this is kind of not your expertise, but do you believe that they've accomplished what they wanted to take out of spring, knowing that they had 
I, I don't know, you know, I mean, a lot of questions that still remain unanswered going into the summer. There are definitely questions. I think, you know, they probably accomplished a, a good bit of stuff here in the spring, you know, talking to, uh, you know, coach folks around the program. I think that they, you know, certainly checked off some boxes in terms of, you know, implemented this new look running game. We saw a lot of that this spring, you know, started to get an understanding of Blake Baker's defense. He felt like toward the end of the spring, um, they were getting a better grasp on what he wanted to do. Um, and, you know, that sort of stuff, you know, obviously position battles, you started to get some, uh, uh, you know, people start to shake out and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there's still definitely a long way to go. Um, you know, this spring is, uh, uh, you know, easy to get kind of, you know, ex- excited uh, by a spring and, uh, you know, everything's optimistic and great and everybody's playing well. Um, so we'll see, you know, come preseason camp, you know, how this team looks again. Um, I think they've probably put them, they probably done a good bit of what they wanted to do and knowing coaches, they probably also would have liked to have gotten, you know, further along. So um, probably a little bit of both and, um, now they go into summer workouts uh, with a chance to try to continue to get better, add to this roster a little bit, um, and then pick things back up in August. Uh, Wilson, last one, I'll get you out of here. The bar has been set uh, ext- very high when it comes to LSU wide receiver play, uh, not just on Saturdays, but on Sundays. Um, Kyron Lacey is receiving this type of attention. Brian Kelly really spotlighted him in his his last presser and said he expects him to break out do we expect Kyron Lacey to kind of hold the, the standard that has been set here over the last 10 to 12 years of, of what dominant wide receiver play looks like at LSU? Well, like you said, that is an extremely high bar that he's going to have to meet. Uh, to, if we're talking about, you know, meeting that, you know, would be, you know, talking about like thousand yard season, double digit touchdowns, uh, putting himself in conversation for being, you know, Belitnikov semifinalist. That's really lofty and maybe a little bit too early to say at, at this point. If that those if that kind of threshold is something he's going to meet, uh, but we spoke to Kyron yesterday, and that's certainly something that he is you know striving for, and, and obviously you would want him to be doing so. Well, everything that we've seen this spring points in the direction of him having certainly an even better year than he did as he began to merge the second half of last season. I mean, he he looks just so confident out on the field, and every single time there's been like a highlight play made during open practices, it's been by Kyron. Um, you know, he's catching receiver screens and uh, ga- turning up field. He's, you know, breaking tackles. He's, you know, catching balls in really tight coverage. And, you know, the drops that were a problem for him at times, you know, over the last, I guess, you know, his first season at LSU and the kind of early last year, we really haven't seen him. And Brian Kelly, who's been at every practice, so he, he hasn't struggled with that at all. Um, and, and Kyron feels like that's gotten him much better in his game, that he's so much more focused. That would probably be one of the more tangible takeaways. And I think of something that, as you come out of spring, is uh, you can feel reasonably confident about is that he's going to be, you know, certainly a, you know, it's hard to it's hard to find the exact right word, but a, a, certainly an improved wide receiver and somebody who is going to be a catalyst for this offense. You know, what does that end up looking like statistically by the end of the year? Um, it's hard to tell here in spring ball, um, but you know, he has emerged and asserted himself as this team's top wide receiver. Uh, Wilson, great work. Enjoy the spring game on Saturday. We will get a recap from you next week and then give you the summer and the offseason off, my friend. You've done great work for us, and we appreciate you very much. Thanks for having me, y'all. Have a good one. There he is, Wilson Alexander, the best. Make sure you're following him on social media at WHAlexander underscore. A lot of pushback on the hat. Oh, it's Master. It's Happy Master's Who knows? Week. Who knows what could be happening yeah, there? Probably That's Master's his Master's thing. hat. The Master starts Could tomorrow. it come from up top? Oh, yes. Could it come from up top? Always a debate. Could be a hair day. Mm -hmm. Um, It is Masters Week, which gives us an excuse to uh, link up with our friend Brody Miller. uh, Oh, yes, we should. We are going to call the the bro. I haven't seen Brody in a while. Uh, It's been a minute. You know, he was Man's a golfer. He got out of football. He's saving his legs. Smart move. Is he a golfer? I don't know if he is or not. Because he really I don't know if a, he is or not. It was a big career change. I don't know if he yeah. is or not. He it does not look like the the, the, the golfer. typical golfer, but you know, I mean, he must really love it. Tiger created a wave. Just a great 20 writer. Years ago. Yeah, I think I was. That's. I that's mean, that I was the cheat is. code for the document. Was go to the athletic and oh. whatever Brody Miller wrote. You just put it in there and you're like, all right, segment. we got content. Yeah, we got segment. we got a twenty minute segment. Yeah. Now it's gone. They we kind of fed it. off of each other. They yeah. didn't replace him. Uh, like no, you, you couldn't. No. Yeah, there's no one on the LSU They took him beat. off the athletic beat. There's no athletic beat for LSU, right? Right. right. Yeah. Damn. 
Uh, all right, Until. we will talk to Brody before Friday's uh, or Thursday. Tomorrow's start day. At, is, Tomorrow is, is right? the start day. Yeah, it starts every. Uh, yeah, starts on Thursday. Man, I hope this weather that's here in South Louisiana and moving towards it is. The pines. It will. Is it will it rain. Really? Tomorrow Gross. in the morning with heavy gusts of wind. I hate my ra- I hate my masters with rain. Yes. Well, the reason that that's important is because Tiger is teeing off later in the afternoon, so hopefully he does not get hit with the bad weather as the man is made of mostly metal at this point. Oh, yeah, the big cat. The big cat is uh, the bionic man. He's got a new back. He's got a new ankle. He's got a new spine. All the things. But it, New knee. New knee. Hip replacements. No, no. He's got, well, he's not using his hips. As of, I believe as of last week, he's abstaining from sex. Oh, yeah. Smart what? Man. Yeah, Tiger no Woods way. said he's, he's totally focused on golf. And no. Yeah, no, I don't like him when he's not. <laughs> when he's not Tiger? No, 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 I need you to be I like my baseball players <laughs> juiced up. I like my Tiger, Tiger Woods, a sex addict. Stub. Don't meet yes. your heroes, folks. Sex I like the stories of orgies of him in the corner barking around orders to yeah. porn stars of what to do and then donning... Tuxedo. Green jackets on Sunday. <laughs> yes. Sex addict and dude's sick. I mean, like, <laughs> ever, since that, ever since he took that out of his life, he's become so boring on the golf course. Tiny bucks. got to focus, coach. Uh, will you send uh, Jacques a, uh, a link, please? But, yes, uh, he is uh, a chance. Thought we were a source, get JD in person. Today. Source close to Tiger has said, and that's what everybody was saying. Oh, like, that's a bummer, man. He's not even going to make the cut. Oh, he's totally yeah. locked in. They say this is what he does whenever he's fully focused. He's, no. uh, he's <laughs> obviously exercising as he always does, but he's eating clean. And they drop that little nugget of, and he's abstaining from sex. Everybody's like, what? Wait, what? You yeah, didn't have to wait. pay for that. But Why? Yeah, so. Man should be having sex. Hold that, on. <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> Tiger Woods trying to burn these balls. Yeah. So uh, see, remember, Dan, we're brought to you by Go Roof. <laughs> uh, Go Roof is online at G-E-A-U-X roof.com. Roof's up with our friends over at Go Roof. You can find them there or ti- uh, dial them up 225-927-8300. Commercial or roof uh, or residential roof they can help you with. Look, this weather right now is nuts. You are going to need a roof for tomorrow. I promise you you're going to need a roof for today. Uh, take down Go Roof's contact right now. 225-927-8300. 225-927-8300. Online. G-E-A-U-X roof.com g-e-a-u-x roof.com is where you can find them online you can get there now start talking to them, uh telling them about where you are if you want to get in the uh, get in the queue they are going to be busy they will be taking on uh work orders here over the next 24 to 48 hours if you have already experienced hail damage wind damage roof damage and you need a roofer out to see you now is the time to get in touch with go roof call them 225-927-8300 and remember we remind you i was talking to uh kelly who's down in new orleans this morning she was telling me terrible weather uh in new orleans uh all morning so if you have roofing problems and issues down in that area get in touch with us at go roof you are in the listening area you are in the service area uh at go roof Online, G-E-A-U-X, roof.com, 225-927-8300. J.D., next. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Roof up. Hold on. Roof's up? Roof's up. Roof's up. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know 
what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordy Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin, Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, grow with Rosie, or Get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in Southdown Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar. Southdown Shopping Center and online philsoysterbar.com. All right, welcome back, Jordy Colada Show. It is wicked outside, it's man. Wild. Stay safe. We just poked our head outside. I had no idea. Um, if you've been paying attention to this weather, it is man, it's dark, it's black I outside. Really man. Did it save is, that go roof number? <laughs> is this? Yeah, seriously. Jeez. Uh, the uh, the eclipse is happening right now. Um, I don't even know what that means. This is what they warned us about. Uh, all right, so uh, look, remember our friends over at WAFB, Dr. Steve Caparato. I asked the crew this morning if I texted him and asked him to come on this morning, would that be disrespectful uh, because of just how busy we thought he would be? It is disrespectful that I texted him <laughs> after seeing the weather. I mean, it looks, like the, it looks like the end of the world right now. So uh, make sure and follow our friends at WAFB. Uh, obviously, they have a great sports team led by Jacques. But when the the wet when you're talking weather, it is uh, it, it's the best. When you're talking about uh, uh, Grimes and Caparato and the entire crew over there at WAFB, make sure and keep up with them. Uh, as you can follow them ev everywhere, uh, whether it's YouTube, social media, all over the spot. Uh, Jacques, good morning. How are you? You're just praising Steve. Because he's Italian, I know. <laughs> you keep the family one of the boys, together. Hey, one of the boys, hey, <laughs> Doctor Caparano. One of us had to add some brains. Uh, the doc, uh, Jacques. This is nuts outside. Nah, he's no. Nah, seriously, Steve's a great one, and I those guys who do weather for a living. I always joke. I say it's a lot easier for me to do my job and tell people who won after the fact as opposed to tell uh, say in advance. But uh, yeah. It, uh, that's why I'm not with you today. They so dry. It was, uh, it's a big weather event today, and they've been preparing for it at Channel Nine. And, and I think there uh, maybe it's north of the bus, but there's going to be some winds of 75 to 80 miles per hour. So it's uh, it's, it's going to be a nasty. The good news is once it gets out, we're going to have a looks like we're going to have a long string of days where it's going to be in the 80s and no rain and great temperatures. Going to be the LSU spring game and the. Southern spring game this weekend. 
Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you around the, the, the buzz of the spring game. We've seen this over the years be a promotional push from LSU, a look for, you know, to get people on campus. Sometimes they coincide with LSU baseball games. What do you feel the interest level is uh, around this year's uh, spring scrimmage? I don't sense it's more than usual. Um, certainly, I think over the years, LSU has made the effort a couple of times to try to pack the house and everything. But I don't think they've ever really gotten 25,000 announced or something like that. Typically, they just gather on the east side between the, you know, the 10-yard lines right there on the east side. And that's it. Um, schools like Alabama, when the Saban first took over, uh, Florida, I think, has they've been able to get. I know Alabama at one point got 92,000, 100,000 guys for their spring game. Um, it's interesting, uh, George. Uh, LSU football fans talk LSU football year round, but when it comes to the spring game, it's always been kind of a meh event. And um, you know, you you get the band in the stadium, you uh, sit in Tigers, and the guys run out. But then after a while, it can, it can kind of deteriorate pretty quickly. Uh, you know, determine who's playing and the substitutions and all that. From my understanding, I've been a scrimmage from about one thirty to two thirty. They're going to warm up for about half an hour, and then they're going to scrimmage for about an hour. That'll be it. And then Brian Kelly will uh, address the media. And I don't think any players are going to talk after the spring game because they have family in town and this and that. So um, that's uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of people saying, oh, I can't wait to get down to the LSU game. I think it's a, it's a good event, um, and it gives you your first kind of look at the team in 2024. There's some guys that aren't here yet. They're committed. It and uh, certainly they're going to hit that transfer. Um, this Indiana defensive lineman who's supposed to visit today, um, and some guys like that. Um, Jacques, who joins us every Wednesday, obviously, uh, is going to be out covering the spring game and covering all the lead up to the spring game. Uh, last night, LSU baseball gets a big, much needed win. Uh, do you think they exercised any of the demons that, that Jay Johnson was looking to get out before they go to a tough? and hostile environment in Knoxville this weekend? Well, Jordy, I think there's always been that debate about midweek games and are they are they not important. And I think certainly in LSU's case right now, when you've uh, entering last night, lost six of seven. I think every game now is important for them. And, and certainly it could have been a case where they went out there and didn't play all that well and scored some errors and won the game, you know, six to three or something. And so uh, certainly for them to go out and really take it to McNeese and win in a 10-run rule, this was a score that you last year from last year's team, right? I mean, certainly LSU 10-run rule with plenty of people last year, especially the in-state and, you know, Jerry Jones to have kind of a uh, historic performance and hit three home in the leadoff spot. Um, and for LSU to pitch well as well and not give up a run, you know, it was certainly um, – uh, what they needed to stop the bleeding, but it will only last fairly. I mean, go into Tennessee on the road. Um, you know, T's record is not that spectacular. They're seven and five so far, but if you look at scores and how they've beaten people, certainly they have the potential to embarrass you when they do win. And so uh, I think I looked it up, hit 89 home runs in 33 games or something like that. So uh, certainly they got plenty of power. We know about kind of. The attitude that Tennessee takes on with Tony Vito and uh, and his players and whatnot. Back to that Italian thing, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens this weekend up in uh, up in Knoxville. But yeah, I mean, she has dug themselves a, a a bad hole. I mean, I think the you know, I think in Paul Maneri's last year, I think LSU started one and eight in SEC play or something, and, and was able to make it to uh, a super regional. Uh, I just think if you look at uh, Jay Jones' game press conferences, certainly the one Saturday, there's a lot of there's a lot of frustration there, and there's a lot of disappointment. I mean, LSU's got the right head coach in place in terms of no one's going to care more about this than Jay Johnson and getting it fixed. But I think he's disappointed in some of the younger guys who were kind of waiting their chance in the uh, behind the the leaders last year, just haven't emerged yet. But look, it would not be shocking for LSU to go 
in two out of three and then make some sort of pit, uh, more on a roll. The second half of the SEC schedule, certainly soft front half, but uh, they got to start winning some baseball games because at this point, you know, they're in no position to, to host for sure. Uh, yeah. Looking on the road as a two seed or something like that. You know, I don't think LSU is going to miss the SEC tournament, but if you if you go three and nine in your next 12 games, you, you might. So, got, got to get a little sense of urgency here. Uh, Jacques, uh, last one before we get you out of here uh, for the weekend. LSU women's basketball. Uh, we saw uh, Angelica Velez put her name into the transfer portal uh, earlier this week. Um, what, what are you expecting from Mulkey here after she, she really put together that super team last season? Um, you know, kind of going into this year uh, of what the strategy will be on how she builds it. Well, from what I understand, they're going to get, what, five or six out of the portal. Mm-hmm. Um, Jader Richard's coming in, and, and is that it? That's high the, school? That's the only one she has signed out of high school. Okay. Well, um, so you got to hit the portal hard. There's the young lady from Arkansas who's in story, right? Who's for, um, We've been weather bombed. I think we're losing you, Jacques. Let's just dial out of Jacques. Let's tap out of Jacques. Into Whoa. college football with LSU and Alabama in the same conference. And, and all that. So South Carolina doesn't lose much, and they're going to have cohesion, and they're going to have chemistry with the players who played together, as opposed to like LSU, who had, you know, a lot of people had to learn e- each other and whatnot. So, um, you know, and and I read, uh, I think uh, Scott Rabelais wrote a good article about <clears throat> uh, the whole national anthem thing and our governor and. How Coach Mulkey's really been quiet. You know, I haven't asked for any interview requests. I'm sure some other people have. I kind of felt like we all needed a deep breath after the season um, with, with several controversies and just kind of some uncomfortable, tense situ- situations. But um, you got to wonder how she's, uh, you know, feeling about all that and the criticism and, and whatnot. You know, some of the things that you talked about, too, maybe a lot of this could have been avoided by just picking up the phone and making a phone call to somebody and, and having some conversations before you, you know, go full blast uh, on people in the public and go on Fox News and all that. I'm not sure. But uh, so anyway, uh, I'm sure Gary Reedus and the staff are, are, are going to hit it hard. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. Why? I mean, I do know why to an extent, but certainly Coach Mulkey has been hit with a lot of negative press from people uh, more than ever outside of Louisiana, whether it was the poll that they did, you know, at least uh, coach I'd least like to play for. I think that they, you know, interviewed 100 players, uh, college basketball players uh, 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 anonymously and and some other stuff. Uh, She's been hit with a lot of negative press. And so I guess. From a coaching standpoint, they're going to have to fight that to an extent uh, to hey to say, hey, look, come play here, and uh, this is one of the greatest coaches of all time. You'll play in front of packed arenas, and you know we, we went to the Elite Eight and certainly lost to a team that uh, made it to the national. Uh, we're testing the ability of our internet in this weather. We are. I think we're getting wet. Well. Before and have it all going over. JD, stay safe in the weather. It's getting crazy over here. Our Wi-Fi is bouncing all around, but wherever you are, uh, make sure and stay safe. Follow WAFB for all your weather updates and for your sports updates. You know there's only one spot, and that's uh, our friends over at WAFB. Thank you, Jacques. Can I, yes. Can I mention one thing before I go? Um, Red Rock and Blue has got a kickoff concert at Chelsea's Live this weekend. Uh, the Atomic Punks, the ultimate tribute. The classic Van Halen is going to play. We've got Otto's, my good friend Joey Holloway, who was in the Antiques and a lot of other local bands. Those guys are going to open up the show. And so it's kind of just a, uh, after you go to the LSU spring game, come out out to Chelsea's. If you're a military person out there <clears throat> and you want to come, please contact me. I'll get you in for free. Uh, and we, we're, we're just going to have a nice event to, uh, to kick off the spring and to lead into the summer. Uh, our softball tournament this year celebrates its 30th anniversary. Holy cow. Uh, wow. Hard to believe that we started this when I was a senior in high school back in 1994, but this will be the 30th anniversary, and it'll be um, 
at uh, Oak Villa in, uh, here in Baton Rouge in late July. And so uh, we appreciate all the support. And uh, Gordon McKernan, as you said, as you showed, yeah, a big sponsor of us. Citizens Bank is our title sponsor across the board. So uh, anybody who wants to sponsor out there, SoKim Solutions also coming through helping us out. So uh, get in touch with me. We'd love to make you a part of it. Uh, absolutely the best. Red Rock and Blue. Check it out online, redrockandblue.com. And there's already starting things. 30th. That's wild. Uh, that's incredible, Jacques. Congratulations on that, man. Thank you as always. We'll see you next Wednesday. Okay. Thanks, Jordy. Later, buddy. Thank you, John. Uh, there he is, JD, checking in. JD. 30 years. Are that's you kidding insane. me, man? Senior year of Good high school. Good Lord. That's, that's wild. That's awesome. I could not think about starting a, a fundraiser as a senior in high that school. That is like, awesome. Some, especially as big as what Jock does, it, it, that's. It's that great. is wild, man. Older than me. Put the fun in Easy, fundraiser. Easy, <laughs> I mean, I'm Easy. just saying, it's Easy. older than me. Came Easy. out in 94. I came out in 96. Easy. Shoot. Shut, <laughs> shut up, Steve. Uh, Barker Brothers, Plumbing and Works. Remember our friends over at Barker Brothers. You can always find them over here in East Baton Rouge Parish. You'll probably need them after today, man. It is wild shit, outside. That's wild. Something just fell on the right side I of the building. I was wondering if that was a door slamming I mean, or if that was weather outside. Something, was, something just happened on the right side of this Might building. Need a little transformer. But no lights out. We've got so the lights there. still. Um, the power is here. We're safe here, though, boys. That's right. Yeah. I feel safe. I, mean, I feel like we I'm are, in a fortress. We're, we're safe. I think uh, I left my phone in I the mean, car. like, the, the, the electricity haven't even blinked over here. No. We're no threat. We're uh, we're in command quarters. We're in, we're in the we're in the bunker. We're in the bunker. <laughs> Finally. Uh, we are. Finally comes to fruition. <laughs> Finally. Full circle. Full circle. Um... All right, have a great day. Stay, Stay safe. safe. Sheesh, man, it is wild out there. I always kind of call the bluff of the the weather man of the weather gods, especially when the schools get involved. That's usually the kiss of death for a meteorologist, right? I mean, when the schools step in and start mm. canceling things around weather mm. reports, you usually see the Doppler radar clear shift up. and just kind of magically clear up, and we end up with you know spring days, another sunshiny day, but. Today is not the case. I believe it's taking all of those days that we duped them and, and we gave the kids one. off for sunshine. I think they're packing it all into this morning, and it looks pretty wicked out there. Up to 80-mile gusts of wind. So uh, if you're driving, if you're out there, just, Can't, man, stay safe. Cancel your tea times, I guess. Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Might hit the farthest Not job of yet. your life. Not yet. Not Catch yet. Catch one downwind. Bill Murray, grab my bag. <laughs> in the round of my life. <laughs> yeah, right. God would never do anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's, Murray steals, did he steal like his putter or something and like runs off when he gets struck by lightning? Like, <laughs> yeah, then he comes in the right after. Yeah. <laughs> You take drugs, Danny? <laughs> Every day. Every day. <laughs> Good. That's right. Uh, uh, what a great movie. It is. Caddyshack, if you haven't seen it, it's probably a great day to watch it. Um, Twister. What? Twister, the movie. The movie Twister? Yeah. Uh, still. I mean, it's a great day for it. You yeah. can live it, and it, it's basically 4D. You just get Have you ever been in up? a tornado? No. I've been different through Have like you? a... No. I've, I've, I've never, never really, seen one? I was about to say, yes, I've never I really... Have. I in real life? Yes. Where I've seen in a, North Louisiana I forty nine up in your neck of the woods. I've uh, seen yeah. I've seen a water Bumpkin. spout like a you know like the tornado that forms along the water. I've seen it. I've seen that, oh. but I've never like seen. You drove straight to a tornado. A oh, tornado. Uh, just unassumingly. Yeah, thought he was, unknowingly. <laughs> thought he was in Twister. I I, I, <laughs> pray, I prayed out loud. <laughs> like out loud, like was praying in the back seat of the car. Like I had to. When I tell you that it was like blue skies and sunshine, I think I've probably told. I mean, I've, I've had to have yeah, told this. This was the, Achilles, the Brandon right? Harris, right? You were. I'm, I'm on my way to Brandon Harris's spring game. Uh, terrible. Because the boss at the time, Gordy Rush, thinks that it's a good content moment to go up there and do a live radio show during the game. Because LSU was going to offer him, or had offered him, and he had committed. And Ensminger was going to be there. Les Miles was going to be there. Uh, Oklahoma, uh -huh. Texas, they were all there. And so we're on our way. I'm on my way. I got the, the Comrex in the back oh, of my nice. car. Yes. It's more expensive than the car. Absolutely. 100% <laughs> more expensive than my life Yes, at the time. 
to whatever you do, do not lose that comrade. Blue skies, Lloyd. I'm telling you, I've got windows down. Birds chirping. <laughs> feeling I mean, good. I'm feeling great. I just got absolutely. It's a great road I trail. just got yeah. my cast off from my Achilles tear that morning. Oh. Dr. Bankston says we probably could use another week. Put the boot on? But it's like, it's, it's, it's. It's you're, you're fine as long as you don't do anything. Yeah, like just don't screw this up and you're yeah. fine. You know what I mean? Don't go play basketball today. Um, don't jump from your front seat to the back seat off of it. Oh, pain, um, pain all over. Yeah, it, was, it was brutal. Um, <laughs> Perks. So finally, absolutely. So finally got the cast off. So I'm feeling like I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. It's a blue blue skies day. Headed to Shreveport. Got a hotel room. Got, I got a, the boot on. I'm feeling the, good. Yes, got the boot up. Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and out of nowhere, man. I mean, the skies just turn like gray. And it, it like I had the windows down, like I said, and I could feel the the, the, the temperature Ooh. drops like 15 degrees. Feel the wind blowing a little bit. Wind harder. gets very very cold. And I'm like, whoa. It's a, it's a, little bit, a big calm. Hey, we're, we're, we're trucking. What's going on? We're yeah. trucking. We're trucking. We're going through, Might be man. behind us. Did I not notice it? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, right. This looks maybe, cool. Maybe load one more? <laughs> yeah. Right. Is that it looks, me? It looks a little hairy out of here. <laughs> nah. Uh, I've been here for a while. But we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Just we're throw good. the window down. It'll clear up the, <laughs> clear and up the cloud. And I'm telling you out of nowhere, man, the rain started coming in, and it was hitting the door first. Sideways. Right. So it's not hitting the windshield first, which looking back should have been like the... Uh, that'd be a warning sign. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Kind of like, you know, the yeah, water rushing out yes. to sea. Like, well, this is cool. Like, no, no, no. You need to run. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's a tsunami course, coming. Right? Yes. <laughs> like, I'm, like the, the rain is like pelting the side of the door. And I'm like, man... Huh. Weather's cold, and then out of nowhere, man, it's gray, dark, and I mean, it's the the deal in this one was the hail. The hail starts coming in, and this is it a totaled, major temperature drop. It then. totaled my car. It like oh, it when, dented your like your. It it looked hood? as if somebody had stood on top of my car with the thing that you would like grade uh, a putting green with oh yeah you know like those big spike uh, things that grade it looked as if somebody had just taken like a somebody punched your green a bazooka somebody... of that on the entire car and when i i mean like busted the windshield water starts coming through are you still driving well at this point like when this like when the, when the hail starts coming i pull over under a bridge, which is like not the thing to do. No, oh, well, that's what I would like, do too. I, 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 I think no I idea, could get right? hit, right? But because the the hail had like started to spider web the the windshield, the windshield. I'm like, holy shit! Yes, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm dying. This is how it's gonna go. I'm right. gonna die. Like, this is this I mean, is. like the water's like now, like kind of from one of the spider webs, like now, kind of like into your trickling trauma. into the. You know, I'm like, holy shit! It's really shit. nothing you can do. Yeah, like I'm, I'm in I'm in no man's land. By yourself? And so, by myself. So I just kind of like, on like instinct, just jump into the back seat. I don't know why. And I'm like laying down in the back seat on the side of I-49 in the I'm middle scared. of a fort. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm, I, I like call, I'm like call, like trying to get out to like call like, and I'm calling Gordy and I'm like, Gordy. And finally I get through, I'm like, Gordy. And this is Gordy Rush. And he's like, yo. And I'm like, I think I'm going to die. And he's like. <laughs> What? what? And I'm like, I think I'm gonna die. I'm on 49 North in between, and he's in the like in the, in the newsroom or like around the newsroom. He goes in. He's like, pull the weather. He's like, and they're like, holy, oh, dude, you're shit. gonna die. <laughs> they're like, I can hear the room. They're like, oh, no. oh my god. And they're like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in between. You know what else? Stone Wall, whatever those fucking towns are <laughs> up in North Louisiana and in Shreveport. And they're like, whoa, dude, you're in it. You're like, right there. And like, I can hear it. I'm like, no, 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 fellas. Come get me. My, my windshield is busted. I'm, I'm, I'm taking water on. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's like a call no for help. gets it. Yeah, you know, they're all yeah. like, you're good. So are you going to do the show? Like, they're all like, kind of like waiting for me to like call back and like set up. And I'm like, you got, you, y'all don't get it. Like, I am, <laughs> like, I am on the side of the interstate. <laughs> no windshield. In the middle of a tornado. My windshield is busted out. And my, I mean, like. Taking on water. It sounds like somebody shooting me up with an AK. Like, the, <laughs> it was like. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I mean, like, I thought I was, I thought it was over. <laughs> I'm dead. I pulled up to the hotel where I was staying. Oh, you kept st driving So it? I kept driving. Yeah. I mean, I Ace Ventura'd this thing back, like, 
from where I was <laughs> to get to the hotel. Okay. And when I pull up to the hotel, great look for the station. The valet dudes are like, Whoa. "What the hell? What happened?" That that was the first like sign. I was like, "What? Like what happened?" I get out. And I look at my like the whole car, bro. The whole car has indentions on yeah. it. I take it to, so I had to get a new uh, a new uh, windshield in Shreveport, drive back, go see my guy Billy Rapp over at Custom Colors over here. He tells me, he says, he was like, right when I pulled up, he was like, your car's totaled. He was, yeah, like, what are you tr- he was like, that's totaled. What are you going to do to this? He was like, what do you want me to do to this? He was like, Jordan, let me show you something. He's like, the part around your window right here, you know, like that's kind of like your door frame. It's kind of like this part of your body. It's like the most, you know, it's like it's the hardest, hardest part of your break. car. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, if you pin it, if you can get through that, like you did some shit. Like, yeah. You went through some <laughs> shit. Something happened to he you. He was like, I have never seen. <laughs> you sure about an AK? The, like, he was like, what were you in, man? Like, what was happening? I was like, Billy, we were taking on hail, like sideways, man. I mean, it was, it sounded like the car was being shot. shot. Like it sounded like it was being shot up. And he was like, I have never seen the amount of like damage to this part of the the car. Of the car. He's like, I mean, like, you gotta pelt something. You gotta pelt the car like Yeah, I you mean, hit a deer. It's steel. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ultimately it's just it's steel. Um it was I'm telling you, it was it was as scary How as was the I show. Been, we didn't do it. Oh, <laughs> No, I missed the game. <laughs> missed the game. Missed the game. Oh, I still got the street for it. Missed the game. Like drove up there, bought, drove up there, ate a steak, totaled my car, and drove back the next morning. And Brandon Harris didn't get to throw a pass. And Brandon Harris <laughs> ended up in North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now he works for Texas. There you go. There you go. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you uh, are out there, stay safe, man. Jeez, uh, it's a bad day to be on the road. Uh, Let's do it again. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning, at seven a.m. That's wild. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. It's the hottest show around. We ain't got to flex. Call up G, we get it done. We earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in. Where they going next? Throw up the L's, now we lit. Band playing net. From the booth to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live. Mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show. Yeah, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. 